So uh, a guy's playing golf and he goes, man, I fucking hit this guy in the middle of the, I was playing by myself in the end of the day. And I couldn't, like I couldn't see anybody. So I hit this shot, but it didn't go high. It kind of went fucking hard and straight. I go over and there's these two guys, uh, one's on the ground holding his back. He's not moving. And the other guy is standing over him and they were uh, wearing those, uh, like the old time pants. What are they called? Um, what are, uh, no, they were white guys. Um, <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabe que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I got to go to that dry cleaner. Here. My kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore, Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Oh, this motherfucker is talking trash about... Beverly Hills. Cop. I love people that say "motherfucker" in a in a sentence. By yeah, the way, yeah, I because love that word. because you know, even I was you know I'm all Elvis obsessed. So the Colonel uh, tells they're doing that '69 special and they're doing yeah, rehearsals right. and, and the Colonel goes to, to the the producer and to Elvis. He goes, "It just occurred to me that none of the 20 songs are fucking Christmas songs. This whole idea for the show." Is, what is it's a Christmas show? Yeah. So oh, is that? I I want to see some Christmas songs, not all twenty, but I'd like to see some Christmas songs in the Christmas show. Okay. Neither of them said anything, and they both walked away, and they got about out of earshot. And Elvis looked at that guy, Mike Bender, and said, "Fuck him, <laughs> motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> You know, I went back to visit a, Fuck him. An, old, an old radio car partner. You know, an old friend of mine, female. She was living back in Virginia. She quit the department, went back. And, yeah, big that does. Big. Yeah, oh, she did. Fucking beautiful. Her sister was an anchor for uh, Channel. Did she have big that does too? Oh. So when I was in, in junior high, <laughs> I don't know how we started saying it, but they would say, hey, so my teacher, she had big tits? Yeah. And they would go, it's what? We were 12 first... years ago. They go, oh, uh, like medium. Okay. But now I've, I've been doing it since fucking junior high. So now I found a guy that, and I do it here. He'll answer. I, and you answer, uh, you're not so. Then you pick up the story. Good, good tits. Not huge. I'll, I'll be not, talking I'll be about so a awful, nun. It? <laughs> it's, it's the I best. Know, so she big we're, we're, we're recording. I could be talking about a nun, and he'll say that she had big tits. <laughs> Thank God no one's listening to us. I think I get into trouble 10 fucking different ways. So I went back to see her. <laughs> uh, by the way, welcome. We'll, we'll get to. We'll get yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. You no, hang on there, buddy. I, I was. We'll call your number. Number two. <laughs> I went back there to speak at the FBI Academy. So she picks me up. We go out, and we had a great t fucking time. She had a lot of. She tells me, "Hey, I know how much money you make. Remember, I used to work with you, and I don't want to embarrass you. But hey, look, I miss everybody. I love you, but this helps me get along." Ooh. And she had a fucking lot of money. And she's, they were opening restaurant number seven, Mexican restaurants over there, and her only competition was uh, Taco Bell. And so well, she, she fucking started at the fucking top. Uh, yeah, she was, they were making wow. bank. And <clears throat> so we go out there and we have a good time. We go to the comedy show. The comedy, matter of fact, Louis Anderson, mm. because of how I laugh. That's awesome, man. Because of how I laugh, he came over after the show. She says, hey, I'm going to be here for a couple of days. Can you come back? I said, no, partner, I'm going. I'm wow. Go you know what? I remember comedians would do that. I'm That's going back great. to L.A. Really? I'm going to be out there in two weeks. You come on out. Hey, comp tickets, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. Because he liked the laughter. Well, she's sitting there. Time to kick me out of the car. Time to go. She says, I got to tell you. She says, I love you. But you know what I love most of all? She says, cops out here, when they get pissed off or they're really angry, they say, damn, God damn it. And, you know, Gosh. maybe maybe a bullshit, but that's about it. She says, you're out here, and she says, and it's fuck this, fuck them, all these motherfuckers. <laughs> she says, I miss saying fuck like you do back there. Yeah. I I, I mean, that's part of my do you, use it, do you use it in your life? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes motherfucker is the only, who's this fuck motherfucker? I yeah. don't under, I, I feel like there, yeah, that's exactly why, because it's like, there are certain times where you kind of have, like, it just kind of fits with what you're saying. Too. Yeah. I even feel that with stand-up, like, where you, 
you pull it back a little bit, but then when you do it, it's like, yes, now it's like an effective. There, there is, uh, yes. You know, like it, it helps. It gives you a little more. But yeah, I definitely <laughs> saw a lot. Um, on our po- on the podcast, I, I'm like always like, G- dude, you are fucking cussing up a storm. I know. Do people cu- keep tabs? I don't. All I know is my mother does, and like she will be like, <laughs> she's like, she can't listen to it because I'll say fuck. So, and, but but there, you know, I'm like in the moment, you and just, she's really like saying, oh dear God, this guy. She's like, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. But I go to me, I'm like, that's just like talking. That's it like, is. It is. That's I, not. That's not anything. That's not planned, and that's not. You know, that's just how you talk. I think it's. I think they're almost. You know, they're almost like triggers or sensors in a podcast. Yeah. Because if you're listening. And you're walking. It can get a little monotonous. You have to have some deviation in your yeah. voice. And once in a while, you go, don't tell me that motherfucker did, you know. Like, there's a, that, that joke about Jesus, you know, he, he confessed and he goes, God, you know, I used your name. And in Bain, he goes, I was playing golf and I hit the first shot right in the middle. And then it was like, you know, it was a par five and I never hit a shot that far. And I said, oh, my God, it's like this far. And then the God goes, don't tell me you missed a fucking putt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Pick up the red phone for pizza. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. And the other one, I know you like this one. So uh, a guy's playing golf, and he goes, man, I fucking hit this guy in the middle of the room. I was playing by myself in the end of the day. And I couldn't, like, I couldn't see anybody. So I hit this shot, but it didn't go high. It kind of went fucking hard and straight. I go over, and there's these two guys. Uh, one's on the ground holding his back, he's not moving, and the other guy is standing over him, and they were uh, wearing those, uh, like the old time pants, what are they called? Um, what are, uh, no, they were white guys. Um, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, ready to have that. <laughs> Aaron, you, you come, to the that sh- one? come to the show next week, Aaron. What, what, hey, what time are you? What are you doing fucking next, uh, next Tuesday? Snickers. Uh, have you ever heard it? No. <laughs> Even on the white shadow, they go, hey, that's, they go with the white shadow. Ken, the uh, white shadow comes yeah, goes, yeah. I can't believe you guys are, are in Knickers. And he goes, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> they went to a country club to go play golf. You know, I can't believe you, we, we were wearing knickers. Man, uh, in this day and age. Man, you couldn't say that. No, oh, man, come on. There's tons of shit. I was watching uh, fucking Eastbound and Down. Dude, that show is shocking that, like, how they were talking it was about, not that long ago. They were talking about fucking a little kid. They go, hey, I'm just, I'm just kidding, you know. In the, in I mean, the opening, in, it, like, the first uh, opening. I mean, he's going nuts. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy because it's like when you, I, that show's not that long ago. And I remember watching it when you it ever, came out. You ever like, seen Eastbound and Down? It's oh, about. Man. It's about. How many seasons ago? Four. They did three seasons, I think. It's about Danny McBride. You know Danny McBride, Tropic Thunder, played the explosive expert. He had the bad ear. He's an actor. I'll yeah, show you who he is. You know him. He's a he's funny as shit, man. Good he's dude. Funny, good yeah. dude too. Danny uh, Danny McBride used to work at the uh, Hilton right here in Burbank. That's he right. He was a night yeah. manager. Yeah, that's right. And, and then he uh, moved back to North Carolina after that, I think, didn't he? Cor- yeah. Yeah. And um, he said he got, I said, was it, ha-? the first thing I said, you know me, I always say, I said, uh, was it haunted? And he goes, I'm going to tell you, man, I heard noises one night. I go up there and I can't hear anything, but I could see things. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And he said when he got in the elevator, and he, he hadn't really left the, like, all the buttons were pushed in the elevator. like. Mm. He just said there was some weird shit up there. Well, I got out of the elevator. I was like, mm. "Yeah, I don't know." About Especially if you're working overnight in a hotel like that, your he mind goes, wanders. I don't, I don't know. He gets in, all the fucking buttons are pushed, which never happens. Uh, pronounce your name, Gareth. Yep. Is that uh, Welsh? Funny you don't have the accent. No, parents do. I don't. Why don't you have the accent? Grew up in Wisconsin. Yes. So fate, I had it as a kid. When I was, oh, you did? Yeah, big time. And then it like, Wisconsin like started to harden those O's. Uh, let's hear it. English? Yeah. Well, all right then, George. You all right, mate? Good to see you. <laughs> big knockers. <laughs> She's got big knockers. <laughs> <laughs> She's got those big knockers, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. That's yeah, I love great. a big knocker, mate. <laughs> yeah. I'm not just talking about the thing you use on the door either. <laughs> yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I, you know, this is kind of insulting to you know, your your lineage, but whenever I go to London, 
and you've been on the plane forever, and there's always somebody to meet you. And they say, "Was your flight enjoyable?" And I would always say, "Would you like to smell my fart?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> "I always say it once though." Yeah. And I do it. I do it. If somebody has a British accent, yeah. I do. I don't care if I met them. I went to the gas station. Was, was that all? Oh, that's one more fart. <laughs> you can't for fart once. <laughs> and the, and this guy wanted me to put it on a wedge and they wouldn't let the, the guy goes hey you can't put that on a wedge because i was going to give him the trevor immelman that he won the masters uh-huh. and they said i was going to put would you like to smell my fonts <laughs> and uh and we just put w y l t s m f would you like to smell my fonts i think i said i think it's better like that <laughs> um i think you, you know um hmm it's always an interesting thing whenever I, we have a guest, man, uh, Gareth Reynolds. Um, it says comedian only, but podcaster? Yeah, Who, where it explicitly says I'm only a comedian. Uh, I don't like that limitation. Uh, I, don't, I really don't like it either. I like to be open. Um, I, I'll do anything. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, I podcast and I'm a comedian. Actor? You know. I used to be, but then I kind of like, that's what I went to college for. But then, like we were sort of saying before, it's like, that's kind of one where you just go, you know, if that comes my way, great, but I don't the, pursue it really. What about, did you not like it? I didn't like, I, I like acting. I like doing that part of it. But I, what I can't stand is like the audition, the, which oh, is a big man. part of being an actor, you know? Do, do you have a, uh, I mean, it's always fucking nightmares, man, a fucking auditioning. Yeah, I started to go like, like without commercial acting, I wouldn't have been able to survive living in Los Angeles. But once it got to the point where it was like, you know, cons- my friends who are actors and the consistency of like going out and auditioning, I'm like, I would rather just have my time. Even even every now and then getting a role, I would rather just not waste the time auditioning. They- Working on the sides and yes. all that other shit. And then- what commercials have you done? I've done shitloads. I mean, when, when I... In my well, 20s, let's see, let's see what Gil would recognize you for. Because Gil watches oh, a, lot of, a lot of TV. These don't you watch old, a lot of TV, though. Gil? No, no, I don't. I, you watch porno or no in the house? Uh, no, no. Not you, not I do house. a lot of porn commercials. So you <laughs> would recognize me. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, jizz rags, <laughs> all that stuff. I'm the jizz rag guy. <laughs> it's like the Sham Wow guy. You see yeah, that Sham, load? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one rag can <laughs> Which actually, he ended up needing the Sham Wow to clean up blood off of that crime scene. And did you, we, I got all the evidence right here in this little <laughs> yeah, fucking rack. Right. Yeah. Ring it out in like a <laughs> little sample. Into a fucking old <laughs> bottle, a smart water bottle. Um, so, uh, yeah, go, let's, so, so. so yeah, tons. But, but, peop, but you know, when people want to come out here, there's a ton of fucking things you can do. Totally. To, be, to, to at least get in the line of, you know, that's why people are waiters. Yeah. Well, and what's like to commercials, start. people don't yeah. understand. Like, it's not like that anymore because now it's like. Pretty much famous people are non-union. There's still like some commercial work. But when I came out here, you could go to commercial auditions. And if you booked a commercial audition, you'd work one day. And you could literally make like a year's salary at a regular job in a day. So it would even pay better than, you know, if you booked a pilot. A commercial would pay better than a pilot. So like I use that. And I was like, holy shit. Like this is going to, that was enough to kind of get me through the leaner years before I really like had time to actually do the things I wanted to do. You know, you need years to like gain the traction because I wasn't doing stand up in my 20s or anything like that. Wow. I, what 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 was uh what was the first thing that you got? And did it come to an agent or did it come to like the back of yeah, those fucking agent. drama I, logs or shit like that? No, no. It was uh it was an agent and I think the first thing was like honestly this like ages me so much but it was like Netscape or something. It was like it was some like Remember early Netscape? Internet yeah. provider. Yeah, you kn- I knew you knew me. It was like, it was like, a, like a fucking crock pot. You put the fucking yeah. disc yeah. in and yeah. you come back in the afternoon. Made the fax noise. Yeah. 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 Um, but it was something like that. And then it was like, the first big one was like Taco Bell. I did like three Taco Bell commercials. And then it was like, then then I had like time to like do that, you know, for a while. But but that was like so, you know, feast or famine. And I mean, that that money is like, oh my God, it's, it's saving you. Dude, Say I one time came, I was broke. And I one time came home Fuck. and I had a check that, that a company hadn't paid me or whatever, and it was for seven grand. And I was like, are you shitting? Like, the difference in my, dis- like, my attitude was like, oh, I'm back, you know? Fuck it, that's a lot of money, man. Dude, dude I mean, when you have, seven when you grand. are, like, watching what you eat and shit and you get a check for seven grand, you're like, holy shit. And it was really, and then I, you know, I had other, like, it really is just, it was like the dumbest work. But the most money, and it really yeah. did like help sustain, you know. Um, and then you, uh, um, 
what is the what is the thing with reading the stories? So that's my podcast. That's what I do. Yeah, I know your podcast with uh, with Dave here, and it's basically it's called the Dollop, and and basically Dave reads a story from American history to me, and I don't know what it's going to be, and then we just like I riff on it, and like, and it's crazy. It's crazy. Every story's crazy. Like you talk about liking like crime shit. Like there's so many stories on the dollop where you're just like, what the fuck is going on right? You want Gil to read you a little story? Yeah, Gil, would you? <laughs> would you read him some of the Night Stalker? Oh man! And he'll make up a, a narrative to go with it. <laughs> this is like, see, this is like an audition now. This just got pressure filled. Feels like he doesn't. Know well, what here, to do. here, here was the. You read it out of a, something like Wikipedia, <laughs> so that it stays to a story that you're not making it up, right? Yeah. Well, I was going to tell him the truth. I don't. Know. It's almost like a magic castle. Do they have this over there somewhere in Hollywood? Like where you go in there and it's story time. I don't know. Mansion. They could. The story time <laughs> yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. And you go in the there. Comedy story. The comedy story. Yeah, something. Maybe. And you go in there, working. but you're, are, are, you, are you the only one that does it? That does the... The story time thing? Like, does it... No, I think there's a lot of those. What? Yeah. Motherfucking, it's from the... It's like a psychic realm, though. I know. Because your your sensors are firing, you never heard something, and you're... That's where... That's like my... I mean, it's super weird, but, like, that became, like... Like, even my... Oh, I used to do improv, like, when I first moved to L.A., and people would be like... Like, that's, like, organized, like, trying to come up, but people would be like, you are, like, a funny guy to talk to versus... Like funny on, you know what I mean. So it's like you the think podcast. You should have used became, this fucking incredible talent for something more helpful to the society, like I mean, at a I'm, university. I, I mean, maybe I'm gonna okay. get around to it. It's on my to do list, uh, right? Yeah, at some Don't point. Don't you, Aaron? I mean, some point I'll. Right, Aaron? We're has always a, saying has how, value. I mean, we're always saying I'm gonna do something good for society. He does something that nobody fucking does. It's yeah, like, someday it'll come in handy to help things. If it could produce water, I do it. <laughs> no. You can't, he's, <laughs> this is the new investigation of the Night Stalker, finding the story on it. Well, it's just that I don't have Wi-Fi, I don't have the Wi-Fi password here, so it's like. Wow, you guys are caging Aaron, with that, huh, Aaron? Aaron, bring something up on the Night Stalker. Aaron, we demand Wi-Fi. Please. Uh, try logging try log into No More Mr. Wi-Fi. Yes. Okay. No more Mr. Wi-Fi. <laughs> um. Uh, um. Hmm. Uh, no more, Mister Wi-Fi. Do you love it? I love it. I love it because, like, Give me password. You know, like, yo, go over there, cover them. <laughs> Plus, everyone will get the password. They'll be sitting out at all. They the fucking got comedy. my fucking password from just the cameras once. I had to change it. <laughs> Re really? Up. See, isn't that some shit? Fucked everything up. They're like, hey, man, you know, you got to change your password. What, you what was it for? Your phone and your like. E yeah, right, and they like, could see it. They yeah, could see me do it. That's a problem. I had to fucking get fucked everything up. And that is quite a process when you got to do the full change. It's like shit. Yeah. Come on, um, but uh, yeah, I love it, man. I'm like, I mean, I you know, I was grinding it out for a long time, like not really. I kind of, I I've been a writer for a while, and I was like basically writing TV shit for a while, and I really liked it, but I always wanted to perform, and I kind of was just like, that's not gonna happen. Like, you know, I tried a lot, and then. Um, and then I started doing a couple podcasts, and I was like doing stand up at the time, but it, you know I was like emceeing or featuring a little bit. And then once the dollop hit, it was kind of like holy shit, like yeah. I can, you know, use this. Did you go to college to be to learn writing? I went. I went to college for acting, which was like. And did you just know the the English part of writing? Like no, correct? I just I just knew com I just had written sketch comedy, so I like knew how to. And I grew up like just watching TV, like my parents yeah. fought, so I just watched Nick at Night. Growing up, and I watched like Jim Burroughs shows all the time. Like I've seen all of Taxi, like Cheers, Welcome Back. You know what I mean? Like I just watched all those shows, and um, and so my brain, even now when I'm writing stuff, has this like sitcom like a recall. final draft. I just know, I just know like that mm -hmm. stuff, and so and that was really it. As far as like grammar and shit, that was just like learned via. You know, yeah. spell check and shit, really. Because I didn't, I didn't know writing. I mean, I, I, I think I could write a script if I sat down and you, did it. But I guarantee you could. But also, I used to write with paper without lines because I just wanted to write. Yeah, right. I didn't want to see the fucking lines, but I just wanted yeah. to write. Yeah, right. And you know, sometimes with lines, you it gets fuck that. Yeah. And um, but when you can write funny, I think they could find a place for you. 
Yeah. Even if you're not the best, you know, they're like, you what can, a fucking ellipse is or yeah. all that other bullshit. Totally. Like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Or they can even like restructure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you give the heart of the idea of the joke. And they're like, you know? all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I think that's totally uh, that's true. Yeah. And I guarantee you with the amount of shit you've done, you could absolutely write. And, and then <laughs> uh, um, could you have sustained yourself? Would you be as happy if you were just a writer? A, no. no, you want. I want. I prefer. You, I mean, you, you know what it's like. Great it's like, fucking mind. Yeah. Well, you just like you feed off of live energy. I mean, you cannot be like even we go into our podcast live, and if you had told me that that would ever happen, that would have been very strange. But it is like you cannot beat energy of live reaction to either stuff you've written or to like when you're riffing on stuff or when you're doing crowd work. You just that to me is like the best version, like the dangerous version. Kind right. Of. Are you writing things down or do you have recall in your mind? I, I, I think you can keep recall in your mind, right? I do, but I'm like, I do both. I mean, I, I record like every set. I basically listen to every set and I start to hate myself and I hate my voice and I hate my words <laughs> and all that, but it's like no longer for me. It is like rehearsed. And so, but then, yeah, then you are able to, you know, like when you're writing on stage, if you like have a tag or a joke and you're just like, and even if you say it out louder in your head, you're like, that's, it goes at the end, or you go, that's way better, or. I was just doing that last night where you say, if you say one thing early, you can call it back at the end if yeah. it's really good, if it's a really good. Or, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, because I see that, like, um, I transcribed. You ever, do you ever go get them transcribed? I've never fully gotten it transcribed. I have actually transcribed it myself. Oh, that's Where, how do you like? There's a fucking companies that oh, do really? it. They don't charge a lot. Yeah, I I transcribe every show pretty much uh, from the last twenty years. Every show you get transcribed. Sometimes, like like I did two shows on Saturday, and the first one the microphone didn't work when I walked out there. Is that a problem oh. for a stand-up comedian? Uh, it, it can be a little bit of an issue. <laughs> and now the back they couldn't hear me in the back. Then they couldn't hear me in the front. And then I'm up there now, and I said, hey. Um, what you, I said, what are you motherfuckers yelling at me for? I fucking just got out here. Yeah. Uh, and then I left until they fucking fixed it. You left the stage? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, because that's a struggle. Yeah. That I said, I'm not going to be up here. And I even told my man road manager who left the fucking side of the stage, I said, what good are you if when I have an issue, you're not in the room? Where were you? Up in at the Hard Rock up there. In, in the late water wheatville whatever fucking wheat land fuck, <laughs> it sounds like fucking you love cream it cream yeah. of wheat motherfuckers uh used to be marysville wheatsville. okay Wheats, yeah. wheatsville and uh i told him after i got off what did he say I, he fucking agreed yeah i yeah. said i said you don't have an issue fucking charging me every single fucking penny but when i need you you're not in the room somebody has to run and go get you well that those days are over even if you're fucking bored, you're going to fucking sit there and you're going to watch because if something goes wrong with the microphone or another time I had COVID last New Year's Eve yeah. and I had to leave, they had to go get him. And where was he? Fucking outside sitting down talking to somebody else. <laughs> Motherfucker. There well, you go. You had go, to man. leave the stage because you had COVID? You felt like yeah, shit? Fuck, yeah, I was on fire, man. Really? I almost fainted, yeah. Really? Like the Dale Hughley one where he fucking uh, He dropped. went down. I yeah. didn't go down. Yeah. Uh, but, but also, Trooper. I saw a red flash go by my fucking like face and I was like lighting me early and I'm like that doesn't look fucking normal like a sash of red you're like Fuck. I think it's like when your car when you're like oh shit what's going on and all the lights go on yeah right you're like uh oh this your fucking, mind's dashboard this fucking car. yeah check engine and, I, and that's that's what really made me get up that was fucking weak I sat down I couldn't remember anything to say That that's another one right and then I saw this red streak go by and I was like uh, I think I better. That's my time. Maybe. Back. Good night. I gotta take. I gotta leave. Of course, somebody fucking videotaping or some bullshit. Yeah, audio right. taping. Um, so when you get your shit transcribed, and then what are you doing? Are you just kind of looking through it for like different? I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. Like, because I I basically do that with like my notes and stuff, and I'll just be like, oh, that's so a better way or a cleaner way. I double space it. Um. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I said. Uh, the Latino culture is, this is where, I said, this is where we, I wrote this by Hard Neighbor, do it. I said, uh, we're a culture that believes that a religious statue in Mexico cries real tears of blood. Mm -hmm. We believe that, but we won't believe that you and the girl at work are just friends. <laughs> <laughs> And your wife is like, I fucking saw, bullshit, I saw you. You saw me, I saw you where? On a fucking tortilla, I saw you. 
You know what I mean? Like that yeah, shit yeah. is just like fucking the ridiculousness. Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, uh, but I like that, man. I, I mean, oh, this is what I wanted to ask you. So, of course, everybody, like Gil's, you know, Gil's funny dude, yeah. structurally. Yeah. He can go up there and and speak for 45 minutes, an hour. Sure. With no with no notes. Jesus. I can't do that. No. Um, what would you, because everybody wants to, listen, everybody wants to do this. Yeah. Everybody wants to have a podcast. Everybody's got Instagram. Everybody's got TikTok. Yeah. What advice would you give for somebody wanting to create small pieces or, you know, they do things like they're, 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 they're their own mom and they come around the corner. Like what's, what's, what's a, what's an easy way of writing or creating those things? I mean, I think those, those things are so like when, remember when it was Vine and you were like, man, Vine is fucking weird. Like those like Vine people. seconds or some yeah, shit. Yeah. And they were getting like TV deals and you were like, yeah. that is not going to work. Cause that's just not how it works. I mean, that shit is so different to, but that is almost what I would say is just like, you know, just fucking gut, like wild wild west, just fucking go. riff, go, and just do. It's so like if you think about it, if you have an hour of content you can do on stage and forty minutes of it sucks, people will be unhappy. But on your Instagram, if you have or TikTok, if you have a hundred that suck and one that does big, nobody's gonna give a shit. What like, if you, what if you had a guy and a girl on your on your show, and when the guy talked. I like you're like right listen, here. and then when the girl talks, you just see like the, the head of a cock come up. <laughs> you're like, what? And the guy goes, "Yeah, I agree with that." And it goes back down. <laughs> and you're like, what's that? And then whenever she talks, and a fucking big fucking, <laughs> go get a dildo, big fucking meaty fucking head pops up. Yeah. yeah. And my, also your sister, oh your sister, it goes oh, fucking yeah. higher. Oh, but then she died. Okay. The mic. It goes back. <laughs> it goes back down. Yeah. You know, it's like a, a, a meter while they're talking. Yeah. There you go. yeah. I like that. We're gonna do that That's next week. Advice. I'm gonna go get a fake bed again and put it up. Okay. Yeah, fake. <laughs> and just in a suit, you know, I like to talk yeah, to you yeah. today about the beaches. Some Manage of the beaches managers. are being destroyed, but, you know, there's still wonderful things to admire out on the beach. How, how, to, <laughs> how to monitor your water. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, what would you say? I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, I mean, I think that, like, the, you know, I think it's like, I think, I mean, again, like, I'm just, I put up clips and sometimes I'll do character stuff, but specificity with that shit, like when you're saying, like, someone is someone's mom or something like that, it is specifics. There's stuff where I, I almost think, I would imagine you feel like this a little bit too, where you're just like, my mind doesn't necessarily work in that, like, shorter form yeah, yeah. way. But when people do impressions of their family, like, that was the advice I got when I first started doing stand up was like, t just talk about, my dad's like a weirdo. So they were just like, talk about your dad. You know, my dad has a weird ass accent. He it like half American, half English, but it sounds South African. And that was just like, <laughs> and then I just started doing stand up with that. And people really relate to that sort of well, shit. So I'd be like, interact with your family member. You create your own little world. Like we think of Kyle Dunnigan, yes, who like crushes that shit. Have you seen Kyle Dunnigan? No, he has a podcast. Yeah. And what does he use? Like a face? He uses yeah. He uses face filters, and so he does impressions and stuff. But it's like he now, I mean, he basically has created shit more entertaining than than like TV. I, I he was, doesn't need TV. He's like his Instagram, his social media. He makes TV shows on YouTube. Essentially, can I, can I show Guild? Yeah. Uh, him doing uh, Alec Baldwin. Oh man. He does Baldwin, he does Trump, he does Bill Maher. Gil, this motherfucker. He does Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, wow. Dude, he's a, he's a crusher. Great stand-up, too. But this stuff is the stuff where, like... Check this out. People freak out. Hello there. <laughs> Alec Baldwin here with another inappropriate Instagram post. I just wanted to quickly thank you all for the well wishes I've received. People saying how shocked they are that... This happened to me and not Stephen. This is clearly a Stephen Baldwin situation. And your beautiful condolences about the loss of my good friend, cinematographer Hannah Montana. She was my friend. She was my friend. I'm <laughs> like that armorer girl who I don't even remember. You chicken Women shit. Over 140 pounds are invisible to me. I literally can't oh, see. Oh, shit. Excuse me. What? Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> His that's, wife. That's Ilaria. Sorry, that was my wife, Ilaria. She's from España, born in a little town known as Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what he actually looks like. Oh, jeez. Armor girl should probably be put to death, but that's not up to us. <laughs> that's up to poor people who don't know how to get up jury duty. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Cook. 
cucumber. A cucumber. I want you to go to any other room and count to a billion. Uh, anyway, happy New Year. Uh, yeah. But it's I mean, all face filter. Yeah. So he just does that with like tons of characters. And I'll be, I mean, you know how it is on so like you scroll through Instagram, you're like kind of like, what? You know, you, you don't, you're short, your attention is short. You come to a Kyle Dunnigan video and you're oh. like, I'm going to turn the volume on, I'm going to watch but it. But they win you over like yeah. right at the right off the bat. Like yeah. when you guys are yeah, fucking right. good, you, you capture totally. it right away. You're like, I got to watch. Like, well, and then no, with him, no... you know you know if he puts out something, yeah. you will go on and give it a shot. But I didn't, hadn't seen him. And then, you know, like when I watch you guys, it's it's you're already in because it's not somebody floundering until they fucking land on something, you know. Yeah. No, I think like that's a part of it, too. You know, it's like you got to make decisions. I mean, in a lot of ways, it is like similar to stand up in, in ways where it's like, or like any comedy where it's like, you've kind of got to be decisive and commit. Yeah. And, you know. Are you an only child? No. Well, I got a 12, a older brother is 12 years older. So there's like. That's a fucking kind of, lifetime. Yeah, it was. Because, you know, when you're 12 years older and then a baby's there, he could have fucking yeah. hid you or fucking hung you upside down. And <laughs> I think fucking, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're like, hey, don't, don't, you know, don't be mean to your brother. That fucking, fuck him. He's not even a year old. Fuck, well, he's you, not going to fucking remember this. You also don't have the thing where you, like, grow up and you're like, we wrestle. and You know what I mean? When yeah. I was six, he was 18. He was, like, fucking smoking oh, weed out of geez. a tin can and, like, yeah. you know, like. So yeah, they know, spin I, you around. I didn't have any brothers? I had five older sisters. Oh wow, that is crazy. They spin you around. Your fucking shoulders out of his socket. You're yeah. fucking eleven years old. Yeah. It's fucking hanging down. They're like, it's all on my shoulders. <laughs> Fuck it, right? It's yeah. Your fucking bones yeah. all. It's like a fucking chicken. You just take it yeah. and it comes out of the fucking piece. Yeah. This is supposed to. This is supposed to be in there forever. That's yeah. supposed to fucking come home. And you're like, I'd go out there and play rough with the boys around my block, yeah. neighbors, and they were in high school and we were just in elementary school. And we go out there and play. They treat us like shit. They, they beat the shit out of you. You go back to your my mom. If you went back to your mom and showed that you were hurt, what you know, would your mom oh, say? Yeah. Oh, vete pa fuera otra vez, you know, I wanted to play. You go out there, do it again. Don't come crying home right now. She, she, and she hated the guys for hurting me, but she didn't want me to be a little sissy lala either. You know, stay yeah. out there and play. What, what's this is a, this is my first question that I've asked on this show. What's the hardest you've ever been hit in the nuts? Oh, fuck. What's that? I mean, I'm going to tell you, I never played soccer. Yeah. And I didn't do this to anybody. You know how sometimes when you, when two guys meet at the ball, Oh yeah. the ball goes straight in the air. Yeah. And then both guys back up. Oh, right? no. And they're waiting for it to come down. The double. And they're going to kick it. So I went to kick the ball, but I wasn't a soccer player, and I missed and kicked this dude in the nuts. So you hit the balls. I, I'll tell you, you when I got You missed the ball, hit, hit the ball. I hit, when I got, I missed the ball and kicked him in the nuts, and he never came back to school. Oh my God, shut he the fucking, fuck He fucking up. called that fucking ambulance. <laughs> you gotta, you retired I've kid. never seen him again. That was fucking 1974. I he didn't just see became a black hole and made no children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's mother, the, that ended the lineage. He grabbed his dick. And rolled over to his right, just and I left. A beam of light, and, they and just went to the sky. They brought the paramedics onto the field. Is this true? I can't remember. Because ever. I didn't hit the ball at all, so it's a it's a young leg kicking <laughs> up, upward. That is, because you're waiting for it to. And, yeah. And we're both like, I mean, it could have been me, <laughs> but I went like that and missed them. Oops. Oh, uh, he just them. kicked the camera's balls. And hit him. Yeah. Man, so that's think, the hardest you've kicked someone in the balls. Uh, we, we were playing baseball at San Fernando High in the winter, which I didn't like in the winter. And we had a winter league game, and it was drizzling, and we're all warming up, but it's drizzling. Yeah. And we're like, are we going to fucking play? It's fucking drizzling. Like, it's soft drizzle. You can still play, but we're, we're, we're waiting for... We're waiting for the coach to go, hey, it's fucking drizzling or yeah, ra right. raining. Yeah. And we go, coach, it's raining. He goes, it's fucking drizzling. We're going to take infill... The other team is warming up. They're going to take info. We'll figure it out. So I played third base, and they would make you throw it to second, and then second would throw it to first, and first would throw it to third to my friend Andy, who I still, I'm still friends with. This motherfucker, weak arm, arm motherfucker. So he throws it, and remember, it's wet. Yeah. So it hits the grass in front of me, and I'm like a rock in the lake. Uh. It speeds up. <laughs> so I first of all, I see him throw it. He had a... Weird ass arm, and I the way he threw it, I said, Oh, shit, that's not gonna 
that's not going to make it on the fly. And if it hit the dirt, I would have been all right. But it hit the grass and then gained like to almost like 1,500 miles an hour. Oh, my God. The, the, and I didn't even really see it. I saw it. You felt it. Before it hit the grass. And it just slicked off because it was the grass. Was yeah, wet. yeah. And it fucking hit me. How old? 16. Oh, so this almost is. Almost 17. Yeah, this is a fresh. And for you, you, the, for you can learn. I was Turn your body cup. sideways. I was yeah. wearing a cup. It cracked the cup. <laughs> Damn. Right. He gave you a and cup. And you know how cracker? they had the foam around the, the cup? Yeah. yeah. The foam bruised around my nuts. Oh, like no. I, had a, I had one of these Vicks, like it looked like a little Vicks yeah, lozenge yeah. <laughs> around my nuts. And it, 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 when I took the cup off, I was looking at it, and those guys were like, let me see. And they fucking grabbed it. And they cracked the cup. They, they. I still remember them laughing right now. They laughed. They laughed for fucking half an hour. I was down. I mean, did the game get played? No, fuck no. So we, the whole thing was for nothing. You just went to the field to get your cup cracked and your nuts broke. And they're like, guys, we're not going to play. It's raining. <laughs> You're like, George needs an ambulance. How about that? You? I would say I don't know I the think hardest. You always remember. I I don't think the hardest I've ever kicked someone in the nuts. No, the no, hardest, no, no. Hit the hardest hit. Was I used to go in high school as well, <laughs> go watch uh, football at my buddy's place, and he had like four younger siblings, <laughs> and somehow it got to the thing where they like one of like his little sister was realized that we did find you know the thing where you you don't want to let the kid know it's funny, but the kids realize that yep. it's funny to try to kick people in the nuts, oh. and it was during the Packer game. And I was standing there because we got like an interception or something, and was and this this little girl had been uh, like trying to kick balls all day, and for I just wasn't expecting it and was just standing there, and, and she just fucking Houdini'd right uh, uh, behind me, so I didn't see her in front of me, so oh, behind me also a kick, oh, and really oh. just full contact both, and it, you know there's. There's a few things that happen when you get kicked in the nuts. One where you sometimes you go, I got a minute to like get myself into triage before like the belly feels pregnant or so, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and then there's some where where you get away with it and you're like, holy shit, I don't know how that didn't. This was <laughs> this was pain right away and illness and I had nowhere to go and it was a dropper oh. and I went right down and it was like a 30 minute recovery. Because normally it'll be 15. It this takes, was like 30 of like. It takes people. a fucking long time. You're laying oh, there. Yeah. You're all right, man. But yeah, normally fucking... you have a minute to go like, where do I want to die? Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can find like a couple. You can put some pillows together and yeah. drop. But oh. I was like done. Th yeah, 30 minutes. So you never. You, so you were celebrating and all of a sudden you feel. It's over. And you, I was you like, I, I don't. I don't know what but football from is anymore. From behind is brutal behind too. Behind. Is more brutal. No, t it's like the Houdini punch. That's what oh. killed him. He wasn't ready for like it. Like a sniper. Yeah. Never. What? Let's sports, go to the parking lot. Sports. Let's go play catch. Fights. Huh. All the years fighting. You've uh, never been never, hit. Never been, never been hit. Uh, not, that, not that I can remember, so it couldn't have been that nothing? devastating. If Not even in, in nothing. You know, I'm a lucky guy. Have you ever, have you ever, you know what the sensation is. You've hit your, yeah. you've, ever, you've whacked yeah. the balls on it. Yeah, but I mean, when he says, you know, Full what is on. the hardest, I, there hasn't been anything you know, I didn't. I haven't rolled over. I haven't fallen down to the ground. Never. Wow. Nothing, nothing in pain. You're pure. That's what we call yeah, pure. Right. He's, you've gone pure. You know, like in Scientology, they try to go clear. Yeah, you've gone pure. <laughs> yeah, I've never. <laughs> you've gone pure. Yeah. Seriously. Um, what What do you make of the podcast phenomenon? Like, when do they come to you and say, "You want to do this podcast thing?" Well, basically, like I met Dave, who kind of had the idea for the show, and he was gonna like rotate comedians and we just had like good shit right away. And I think partially cause you know, it's a pain in the ass to book comedians. So he was just like, let's you and I do it. And, um, and this was, you know, this was like eight years ago. And so like, and our, so our podcast kind of like exploded because it's entertaining, but also there were, it was not a saturated <laughs> like market, it. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we kind of, for a while, we were just like, you know, we just had a lot going on with it. Um, and then like everything else, I mean, it's like, you know, you, people are going to start doing the same shit eventually. And so now podcasting is a thing where, you know, it's a very saturated thing. Like a lot of, like pretty much everybody does a podcast. Most like when Obama and Bruce Springsteen were doing a podcast, I was like, this is some bullshit. This is what the fuck? Like leave, leave a piece. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's just like anything else. It's like, you got it. Look, if this is entertainment, so you got to compete, you got to be like as good as you can be. You kind of, 
almost would rather have to like stay sharp versus right. like rest on your laurels. There's a lot of podcasts that like once they hit, you know, they do start to kind of suck a little bit more because people are like, yeah, whatever. We got the ad money. And do people? You think people stay loyal like they would to a um, to a television show? Yeah, that they routinely watch it. I, but I think like a TV show too. You probably lose. You know, when you get to season four or five. Some people are just like, yeah, I'm kind of yeah. used to it. But then you have the the core audience who's like, I fucking love it. Right. And and podcasts give you the ability to have like that core audience. And I think like we're really lucky to have that. If you can get that and you get like, you know, like for you, it's like an extension. For you, it's like this is just, I mean, it's a much different way to connect with your fans. But right. you already have you know, you already have fans. This is just the difference. For me, it's like, this is what gave me fans. Oh, right, right, right. You know, which is, um, for me, which was like fucking crazy. Because I, like I said, I kind of like, was like that ship has sailed. So for you, your, your, your freedom is you're bringing people in. I could lose, I could lose people by talking. Yeah. And I, and I think like by, you know, oh. by stand up too, it's like, you know, like I try to convert my podcast fans into stand up fans. Right. You know? There you go. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's the natural. Yeah. You don't drink beer, do you? Uh, I'm on a dry January, otherwise I would drink oh, good a beer. For you. What's fucking dry January, motherfucker? I don't drink during January. I drink. I have a soaking December, so and I get shit faced every night of December. Oh, you do? And then January, I let my would liver that take recover. The, would that take the place of Lent? But I some, mean, I'll have one. Whatever. Some, no, no. I, I, not if you've been dry the whole time. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> let me do it. You're basically forcing it down that's my fucking, throat. That's fucking comedy. Yeah, right? yeah, He's forcing it down my throat. What am I supposed to do? See how smooth that was, though? Yeah. Fucking peer pressure. No, I don't. You see, just open it. I love. Listen, I was falling in love already. Now I'm already. Hey, if this was a fucking thing, that little fucking deal. Uh-oh, look out. Right Hit you in the nuts with the it. We'll the head comes up. Uh. He's making his first appearance. <laughs> hey, next week, I'm going to bring a fucking dildo mm. in here. I don't think I got one at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think I might have one. I think I read I have one. Um, yeah, man. I mean, Gil, this was all, Gil, Gil, I mean, I'm talking about Gil. So Gil was this fucking incredible detective yeah, and, right. and this is the thing is like I've, I've mentioned it before but I'm interested in how, what you think you know like you become like a certain age and how old are you how, how old were you when you I was 31 when I started working and when you, they asked you to retire I was 60 they didn't ask me I, I just 60 I, they wanted me to stay I didn't that was oh it. you didn't want oh yeah I didn't oh. I, at, at, during that time they were asking me to be a yes man and I'm not a yes man well then, so I hey, I'm at the top of my game. Things are going good. I'll just leave and I won't go out bitter. You know. You they, think that's how they ask you? Do you think that's how they get people to retire? No, they. It was very specific. They wanted two things going on: fuck around on a computer, you know, dirty jokes, sex shit like that. Okay, you send them to me, or if I see you doing it, I'm supposed to rat you out. Computer police has policy. I mm -hmm. understand. So I told my guys, okay, look, don't send that shit to me because if they they monitor. And if I get caught, I'm going to get spanked real hard. You're going to get spanked, but I'm going to get spanked even harder because I'm I'm your supervisor. Mm. Don't do it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to turn you in. I won't do it. If it's that good, I'm not a prude. Send it to my personal computer. Yeah, right. You know, I, I, I so that's one thing because that's policy. The real reason I left was because my boss, my captain at that time, said the executives want us to come up with a new scheduling pattern. Have so you ever said this publicly? No, no. Okay. Uh, so I said, you know, they want us to work zero overtime. And I said, and I was the only, I was a lieutenant, so mm -hmm. there's six lieutenants up there and a captain. I'm the only one that has ever worked murders before. These guys don't know them. Come on with your hands up. And, and so. Yeah. Oh, fucking never mind. I, I just well, said. I mean, do it, but we won't be here for it. <laughs> yeah. Promise. That's an impossible task. We are a reactionary force. Yeah. We go out. We don't schedule murders. Whenever they go, that's what we. Yeah. I said, so you got a guy that's been working all day, and he gets a murder, so he goes out to work his murder. And then what does he do? He tell the families, hey, uh, excuse me, my eight hours are up. I got to go yeah. home. I, I, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, crazy. That's and, some fucking bullshit, yeah, man. Yeah, honestly. And, and he said the first time, I said, what are you going to do when that happens? He says, first time somebody tries that, next morning they'll be rolled up, they'll be gone. And I said, you can't do that. You, you know, it's you yeah. can't do that. You won't do that. And he, and at the end of the meeting, he says, and if there's anybody in the staff that can't go along with the program, they can be rolled up as well. You Ooh. know, we'll just find a new home for them. Yikes. He didn't realize, you know, he didn't have the juice card to get me rolled up. 
but I didn't feel like banging heads with yeah, anybody. Right, right. Man, this job has been good to me. I've been have you know I'm good. I know what I am. So I just said, okay, that, you know, it's time for me to leave. And I told the sheriff and the under sheriff. It's a big decision, though, man. Yeah. You make it sound like you know I knew it was time for me to leave, but that yeah. fucking thirty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to bang heads, so it was, and I left. Did and you cry? No, I didn't cry. I was, I missed it. I ran into the sheriff. I'm saying, something. I'm saying, because I would fucking miss it, man. If, yeah. Oh, fuck yes, oh, yeah, I missed it. Thirty years of Amy. I told the sheriff six months after I was on crutches. They replaced my knee, and I'm on crutches. He sees me as a. So uh, what are you doing, retiree? And I said, I said, fuck I'm, you, I'm, I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm making it. I said, but make no mistakes about it. I ain't gonna bullshit you. I missed the job. I missed the guys that I was working with. Their profession. I missed. The rollouts early morning, and I miss talking to young. I miss deputies. those pictures of fucking Mexicans <laughs> with fucking thirty kids around them, <laughs> <laughs> giving young kids a ray of hope. There's more to <laughs> police work than just a picture. radio car. Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Come on back." He says, "Get your knee taken care." He says, "Come on back." I said, "No, I left for the right reasons. Going back is not what I need to do. I'm not a yes man. You need yes people." And I wasn't a yes man, so I. I think the worst fucking thing to be is a fucking yes man. Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't no, do you it. you just go along and... Yeah. I mean, you get, like... I'm sure, like, you deal with that in in our business, too. You know? Like, I'm sure you've run into that shit. But the podcast like, gives you a freedom of... Dude, it's the game changer. St- that's what I liked about stand-up. Because I was doing stand-up before podcast. It was like... You know, write Like, when you're writing shit, you gotta send it to someone and they're like... Eh, like, someone who doesn't know comedy. Who's like, I don't like this and that. And you're just like, yeah, that's, your job is not to tell me jokes. You can, like, tell me other shit, but to be like, I don't like a joke or something like that. Stand-up, you literally get to find out if it's funny, you know, and you do it a few times. If it sucks, it sucks. If it murders, you keep working on it. No, not there a real is, murder. <laughs> there's nothing better than humor to make people feel good and get them engaged. And they listen. if it's funny, they listen to you because they want to hear more. Well, it's also on the other end to be like eliciting that is like truly just one of those i mean you just get addicted so quick i remember being like seven years old and like doing a play in like grade school and getting a laugh and that like stuck with me sure. for the rest of my life and being like that feeling is very good you know the other night i did uh they called it uh wine and crime crime and wine wine and crime and it was at a winery <laughs> and so i showed a video and then it's question and answers after people from the wine club there and it, it and it sold out you know uh in two days small venue went up there and talk and wait, wait, listen you, first of all small and venue i uh, think that's all like jumbo shrimp right yeah because right, yeah, venue yeah. means big i think in france oh i don't know and so so it's like small big okay. yeah. it's a small building a small room a, uh, a small place that was being held yes yeah and so we did it, and they said, and my wife was there. Oh, you, want, oh, you took her? Yeah, I took What's her this time. The and, fucking night out? Of the, and the, the no, Griswold well, they, the gave us, they gave us uh, an Airbnb. Oh, shit. Took a couple of couples. Took uh, six of us went. Is it better, like, when you've been married 51 years, and you go out at a, to a B&B with your wife and know that you don't have to fuck from pressure that night? Like when I was married, and we go to a place, and, and my wife would be like, "This place is beautiful." I'm like, oh, like oh, man, yeah, fuck. I know what that code is. That's I code. I'm, I think I'm gonna have to get the shit. That's code. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd be. I'd, I'd look to get the shits. Uh, yeah, I would look like, oh. at fucking Yelp. Oh. I'd look at fucking this place sucks. Yeah, yeah. You go to a restaurant. Like, like, Give me the garbage. Put some We're garbage on the plate. I'll eat the trash. <laughs> We're 180 degrees apart. I look forward to that shit. Man, right? that's fucking crazy. Yeah, wow. somebody, I, no. I, I hit it. You, my, did did you have to hit it in the, the air? No, we had no. two other couples with us. Well, it's not a fucking game. Fucking enjoy game. that. I mean, look, six, come on. All six of the <laughs> fucking middle and shit. Yeah. Like, lay a, ah, lay ah, a tarp, just, tarp just, down. Fucking, yeah. Hey, yeah. Fucking Get your balls hit finally. Hey, fucking back around. Yeah. The reach around, the reach under. So, I'm up there talking. Question and answer period. Three different people said... How come you're not doing stand up? You ought to do stand up. You ought to do this. And I, right in front of my wife, said, hey. I and those offered... three people were Rudy Moreno, yeah, no, no. Willie Barcena, and Carlos no. Mencia. And I just said, no. I was asked about that one time. I said, thought my wife said she didn't want me up here. <laughs> and she didn't want me doing stand up. You know, so. Why? I'm Did she say that? Yeah. I mean, and you said that to the people? Yes. That's hey, listen, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. How come I do it? Hey, my fucking wife didn't want me to do it. Because of her. Her. Fuck at her. That little fucking, right. fucking munchkin right there. Now, 
Fucking because Dunkin' Donut. Fucking she heard it skin. because she heard that I, I wasn't she afraid. Heard she heard it because I wasn't afraid to, to say, say it in public. She's the one to do it. And my friend, that is your first fucking step down the yellow brick comedy road. Yeah. When your wife is in there and you're not afraid to say, my wife doesn't want me to do it, then that's almost your jumping yeah, off point. Yeah. I, I even ad lib. Yeah. Let me not do a step. Oh, oh because that, so you're ad libbing. Yeah. And you're getting yeah. fucking laughs. And what you're doing is, it's almost like a, a fucking like Pac Man. You're, you're just collecting laughs, collecting fucking energy. And you're talking about what you. It's off of what at, you know. You know. Yes. Yeah. So it was. It was nice. It was. It was. We a can let him finish the story. We keep on fucking interrupting. <laughs> Sorry. About no. 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 That would... So. So you went up there. And what did you say though? That you went up there it was wine and crime. What was your topic? A Night Zinfandel starter. and a Night fucking starter. double murder, all, something quaint. Yeah, I showed him a video. Two. Did you open video. with any like state, yes. like a, a rose manslaughter and a man, yeah, manslaughter yeah. and a rose? Yeah. Most everybody there had already seen the documentary. Uh-huh. They all know what it's. So I showed him a different. But if video. there was one person in there that said, "I didn't say fuck you." Then. The night what? The night watcher. I'm just well, here for wine. The video. I introduced myself. I showed this video that talks all about the night stalker. Explains everything. Okay. That, Once we, that's done, and then he's already doing multimedia. Yeah, op- right. Yeah. Opening up, question and answers. And yeah. I, I got it. One of the you say. You should say like this. Uh, I'm gonna open it up to question and answers, but first. Nine inches flaccid. Yeah. <laughs> and you fucking take off. Start with your Eight verga. Hard. Yeah. Start with your verga. That's it. Yeah. Some lady asked, why do so many women follow these serial killers like that? And my initial response was, hey, I'm not Dr. Phil. Different show. You ask him. I don't know why. That's a psychological. You should say, thing. I'm Dr. Full. Yeah. Full. You're giving me a <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So is that what you say? They yeah. laugh at that? Yeah. And you know, pe- people laugh. There was a lot of, there was a few things people were laughing at. But you know, your body language is uh, you're you're not into it. No, no, I'm, your well, right now it's because it's it's comfortable. It's, it's a little cool in here. I oh. left my I left you're my covering jacket. Covering in hard nipples. No, <laughs> oh, the fucking the turkey's fucking diamond done. cutters. Yeah, all right. That. Fucking zerks. Yeah. <laughs> so it was uh, it was a good night, and I and but 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 no no no. I mean, listen, if I was. Let's say if we were detectives, yes. let's say he and I are detectives. All right, here we go. He knows from comedy, and I would, because of the same thing, if you say, yeah, it was a great night, there's a whole fucking ton of shit that we're not hearing, right? Yes. No. All right, well, hey, let me and say. And we're detailed we're hey, detail people. Well, well yeah. let me say this. I'm the suspect. You two are the cops. I'm going to tell you right now, fuck you. I don't want to talk. Where's my, where's my attorney? I ain't got to tell you shit. No, wait, wait. It's just quite, I mean, yeah, you, you can, you can, uh, you can hey, lawyer man. up, but we yeah, just want to know. There's a couple guys talking over here. Yeah, it seems I mean, like you're a little listen, defensive. Man, yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, but but did, you, did you have a, a set time? Or, or here, here's this, because I was never really that comfortable on stage. So neither was Letterman. They said Letterman would say, how much time are you doing? He goes, well, I got 20 minutes. I could do 20. I could do it in 40 minutes. Or I could do it in 20 minutes. Right. He said, Letterman would say, I only have 20 minutes. You want me to do it in 40? <laughs> or do you want me to do it in 20? That's it's a, It's the same 20, but I can extend it yeah. to 40. And take longer pauses. Or 20. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me. I only have 20. You want it to be 30? I can make it 30. I can't make it over 40. It's yeah. only, it, can only go, it only goes 40. So I, when I would get up, I would be like, get me the fuck out of here. Like, they would say, do 15. Hey, you did 12. Did I? I thought, oh, I Also, thought the worst over. when you're ramping through the material and you're going, fuck, you're I like, need what? 12 and oh, I'm at 7 and I'm almost I'm done. Fuck, I'm almost done. Hey, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, this you're was doing easy. question and answer, Yeah, this was helpful. easy because it was all Q&A, all on something that I'm an expert that I know about. So it was uh, an easy gig. Do you, have set, do you have set lines that you might say? No. I just go up there, whatever... Of them. You know, last time I did Vegas, they said uh, 45, 45 minutes. And this is. Is that a lot of time to you? It's a lot to me. No, they said 45 what, minutes. What are you doing there? You're doing like similar things or just like another kind of QA deal? This was, no. The, this one, they wanted me to talk about uh, my career and where I went. Oh, okay. And then that develops. Then once you get into homicides, then you get to the Night Stalker case. Right. You talk about. Which is kind of, which yeah. would be like your headlining material. Exactly. Right, yeah. So then you carried on with that. I said, oh, okay. And the, the night before, I was having some wine and some dinner, and they said, so what are you going to talk about tomorrow? And I said, I have no idea. I'll find I out know tomorrow my morning. Yeah, yeah, right. I'll find out tomorrow morning when I'm there and up on wow. stage. And so that's what I did. Jesus. And then they have a it's, – it's a professionally done thing, and they got a clock – A&E sponsors it, I think. 
They have a clock right there, and you can watch, see how much time you got. And I said, okay, well, hey, listen, this is great, but I've got time for maybe one, two more oh, questions. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I've never fucking said that. Is it yeah. time for A&E to change its network name, Gil? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Arts and Entertainment, and it's all just murder and Yeah, that's all shows. it is now, yeah. yeah. M- M- MCS, Murder yeah. and Cop Show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. MCS. <laughs> MCS. There you go. But it was, ar- it was Arts and it used Entertainment. To be. It used to be. But, a, but didn't a, they have the evening at the tonight. Improv back in the day? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Even at the improv yep. was out of off brand, but yeah, yeah. but it's still arts and enter- uh, it's I still arts. I remember my English mother used to love A and E. That's how I knew it was like a weird network because it was like. What would she watch? Well, what did she think of Antique Roadhouse? Love. I, this is what I remember growing up was Sunday nights. She would watch PBS Agatha Christie murder shows. And I knew Sunday night fucking sucked. That's the whitest woman in the world, dude. Right there. As w- and it's all white. I mean, it was like Poirot and like. Uh, if a black person walks, hey, get the fuck out of here, <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> We're trying to watch that fucking guy the Christie. Who the fuck? Who the fuck put him in here? <laughs> yeah, he's Dominican. I get the fuck get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. Hold the fucking beat it. Cut that motherfucker out. <laughs> yeah. We were doing good for the first half hour. <laughs> And then Placido fucking Domingo <laughs> fucking walked out. Fuck everybody changed the channel. Yeah, yeah. The whitest shit. But it was also what you could rely on. I hated it though. I would like sit there <laughs> and I'd be only at the one TV with cable. And I would what if like, you fucking dozed off when she fucking, yeah, hey, wait, hey, motherfucker, no, she'd be happy. Because I would just be like, is it over? Like my catchphrase, like, is it over? How, it feels like it's over. How come time goes by so fast now? And when you're sitting there, I used to watch Lauren Swalk with my grandparents. Oh I would be my like, God. Ah, damn. Like, that's how you would extend oh. your life to make your life feel yeah. 160 years. When oh Arthur Duncan God. would fucking come out and start dancing, my grandma would say, they're, da- they're musical, okay, no George. <laughs> Lawrence Well. That was my dad, one of my dad's favorite shows. My grandmother wanted to go, I, I think they did it at the Palladium. They, yeah. I, I go, grandma goes, my grandma goes, George, where do you think they filmed that? I think they filmed it at New Zealand, grandma. That's I, real I, far. I, I, I want to go. <laughs> For fucking, for fucking 12 miles away. It would have made her so happy. Two planes away, Grandma. She would see old people. You know how they always wear the yeah. old clothes oh, and they yeah. wear the glasses? And my grandma would say, I want to do that. You're like, it's literally up the street. It was like some shit that was, uh, you know, like, I'd like to fucking be, become an astronaut. Yeah, maybe. it's like a dream. You're it's like, fucking 12 miles away. 10 minutes away. Yeah, fucking um, um, Hollywood Palladium. I made it sound like, like you had to get there by fucking shuttle, yeah, the space okay. shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 is it? A, so that the wine and did you get paid? No, this one I did. Uh, the guy that told me about coming to call up George Lopez when he put it out on the radio. The guy that called me and said, "Hey, did you I put it out on the radio? radio?" No, you did. I he just heard a cut on, of the nothing. I heard. I heard on yeah, the radio. Like George Lopez just said, "Anybody know Gil Carrillo? Haven't given me a call." The first time you started looking for me, when I called you and left your message. Yes. Okay, well, that guy was a lead guitar player in a band I used to play with. Mm. We were kids. His and son, that band was named the, the Spring Righteous Flutes. Oh. The Righteous Rhythms. The the Righteous Rhythms. Okay. <laughs> and so not the. Not the. The. T H W. Can I tell you a story? Wow. You can tell me a story. Intro intros are always the best, right? Yeah. So I was doing Trump twenty nine had a casino out there. This was years ago. And there's a little guy with the suit. He goes, hi, I'm the announcer. I'd like to just get a bit of an introduction from you gentlemen. Uh, it would be great. I do the intros myself. And uh, he got he got Lowell Sanders. <coughs> and he says, they do the whole thing. Guy gets a microphone. <clears throat> Trump 29 Casino proudly welcomes George Lopez. And then we could hear clapping. He'd back up. <clears throat> but first... Please welcome an entertainer who has worked with such, such luminaries as Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight and the Pips, and Luther Vandross. Please welcome Lowell Thomas. It, it's Sanders, right? So he goes, Lowell Thomas, and Lowell goes, Sanders, motherfucker. <laughs> he goes, Lowell Thomas, Sanders, motherfucker, Thomas. Sanders and he fucking walked out. You could hear it. I record the shows and you could hear him in the background. Lowell Thomas. Sanders, motherfucker. <laughs> Sanders. The, the whole professional air. Just. It was I I was fucking on the floor. I'd be I was dying fucking, laughing. Fucking dying. Yeah. Because of his you know, Van Luther Vandross. 
The Pips. The Pips. I've rehearsed it all day. The, uh, Lowell Thomas. Sanders. Sanders, <laughs> Sanders motherfucker. Sanders, <laughs> you can hear motherfucker in the yeah, back. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, the, not the. The, right? T H E E double E. Wow. That's from the land of. Like that, that's from your Yeah, land. I was going to say. That's my So, team. his kid, Richard Jr., now drives, uh, he's got his own limo service, uh, Tour de Vino. He's got three limos, and he does wine tours in the Temecula Valley. He had asked me a couple of years ago if I would consider doing something for him. He said, really make him look good. And I said, I'd love to, son, but I'm under contract with Netflix at the time, and I couldn't talk about Night Stalker. Wow. Fucking Diamond Jim Brady yeah. over here? Yeah. <laughs> I love Sorry, you, I'm son, not, but... Uh, I'm spoken uh, for. Use his cane Just, to yeah. push him in the <laughs> chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's God a the it. Netflix. I've never heard of it. I can yeah. do Get away now. <laughs> Out the way, boy. Out the way. <laughs> Excuse me. The Netflix. Back up. Have you heard of it? Aaron, you're lucky you're put on the, the other side. Put back. this out of this fucking... Here, can you put this cigarette away? Put it out. In your own hand, goddammit. Don't you know who I am. Open your mouth, ashtray. <laughs> Get over here. This motherfucker. This dude's got it, man. You got the magic eye, Hoyt. So his son drives a tour. I said, okay, a couple of years, the contract's over. So now... I said, hey, I can do this for you now, son, just as a favor. <laughs> you know, that, that's what I'm doing. So, But do you think, would, I, I, can, I I say, yeah. can I say, would, it's not a favor, really? Uh, no. Because you have to drive there. You're giving them your time. It's a something that don't ever give away what you do. Don't ever do for free what you give away. But you love it. Or don't ever, yeah, well, I did. The, what, and I, I truly did. I don't Temecula. Know. Okay. So I drove. Oh, Temecula's that's, fucking, that's pretty fucking far. three hours out there. Your so fucking radio starts cutting. I did it once for them. Now, as a result, <laughs> as a result, close. They, want, they want me to do another one. Oh, well, feliz. But, we passed it. Oh, my God. Where are we? But they realize <laughs> that next one's not for free. That I did right. for oh, right. It built him up, so the next one it's will like be heroin. for free. <laughs> and he's telling me, hey, <laughs> everybody in the valley, all the wine... They're saying, hey, how'd you know this? Snob, you do this? Sucker. Yeah. I mean, so now they, <laughs> they they all want a piece of the action. And he says, and they all know it's not free. So there may be there something. There you go. I have a showcase. Yet, yeah. I have yet to speak someplace. Were you wearing a scarf? Right. No. Come on. Next I'm time. Just, I'm just the guy. I'm fucking Alistair O'Toole over here. No, I'm like just the, a I, If you need an Agatha Christie look, I'm your guy. No, I, I get a beret, I just, a scarf, the whole thing. Every time I've spoken publicly... And no matter how bored, you can time. stay in the room. That's right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I still get, I, I'll pick up a job from where I'm at to go someplace else. Have you ever considered having an agent? Uh, yes, but it hasn't got that busy. I, 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 beg to, I, I, would, I would say, I'd beg to differ on that. Yeah. I think if you had an agent, so what they would do is they know what's going on in all of these situations. And they, agency put out stuff to the agents and if they have you, they plug you in. If they don't know you, you don't get plugged in. Yep. As well as, like we were saying before, like crime and wine. I mean, or like crime and jet. If you're like, if that's your jumping off point, that subject matter is as weird as it is, like like we were saying. I mean, and when we walked like, in, everyone was dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's like murder mystery dinners. You yeah. Know, that, that's, you know, that's I used like. to do in Boston murder mystery boat cruises where we'd have to dress oh up God. like characters. And, people oh. try to, and it was like the lowest rent shit ever. But I'm telling you, Pete, like th that, they if you had a real it. version Who would you be? I would either be the hippie or like the flamboyant actor guy. But I was mostly the hippie. Which was easy because I was like, kills, like, hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah, I got shot at one point. So I was like, man, I don't know where he is, man. I don't remember what he looked like, man. Oh, fucking hilarious. Yeah, people would that just voice be shit-faced. Like, would you have a wig on and everything? Like, yeah, wig, the thing. whole thing. Like peace I got a hundred bucks. Like a yeah, hundred bucks, and we'd go out in the Boston Harbor for three hours, and these people would get, like, throw up fucking, on the boat ugh. fucked up. Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't think they're trying to really solve these crimes. That's fucking. You'd have like some, you'd have some like hammered woman who's like, I think it's all actually a bunch of bullshit Woodstock. And I'd be like, No, man, like I need you to get out of my way. I gotta go back oh inside. Oh my god, that's yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it was the weirdest. But that's like, but that's now. what that. But but also people getting fucked up. Yeah. And well, because it was open just, bar. Oh my god. The whole in Boston, it's all like, how do we cover for like local alcoholism? Like that was certainly like they were they were like, you get food and you get to solve a mystery. And people are like, and all the whiskey we can drink. And oh my like, god. Yeah. And that was the mystery was where did all the fucking booze go in these people? 
That if was you ever throw up outside of of the bo- of a boat, fucking Halloween candy from your first fucking Halloween come out of you. Like, yeah. There's something about the water <laughs> and about having to drop. It's an epic hack bar. What? Yeah. Like, what yeah. the? Fuck? Like, I ate dice. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I ate what? Dice. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> that was when I was a baby. Yeah, fucking I, dice. I'm solving murder mysteries. That fucking I, dice come we out. Went on a, we went on a trip to Hawaii, and I thought my brother-in-law's wife was gonna kill me. Because he gets seasick. We got out there and uh-huh. on a little catamaran, and he started getting sick. And the more the sicker he got, the more I laughed. Uh-huh. And then the captain says, get him on the other side of the boat. And they started to move in the wind at the wrong way. Fucking vomit hit the uh-huh. captain. Uh-huh. Get that motherfucker uh-huh. out of the way. And then they threw anchor. And the captain told my brother-in-law, he Swim, says, motherfucker. get in the water <laughs> and look at the land. He says, it'll calm oh. you down, oh, wow. and that'll make you feel good. He got in the water, and he started puking in the water. I said, fuck it, everybody back in the boat. He's chumming for sharks. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so sharks are like, look, I'm a little hungry. I mean, I could eat barf. I'd and rather fish. I couldn't stop laughing. And sh- I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. She wanted to kill me. And as soon as we got back in land, it was okay. Man, I I used to get like super seasick, and that sh- that will stick with you for. How did you get that gig out there doing doing a fucking Woodstock out there in the middle? That of was fucking- literally like in Boston because I went to school for acting, and nobody would audition for shit, and there were like local casting agencies, and so I just started like submitting myself, and I would get called in for the weirdest shit, like never like sometimes commercials that would be like in Bo- you know every now and then it'd be like a movie but you know you'd never have a shot but i would get like the weirdest shit and this was one of them this dude was auditioning people for this thing and it, like i said i was in college and it was 100 bucks a saturday which was like you know decent and so i just i don't know i just did improv in the audition and the dude just liked me and then he just invited me on and then every saturday night i'd go out in the harbor for three fucking hours and just make like, 100 bucks yeah and just be like no man i don't know who it was yeah but yeah. like yeah but it was like i mean yeah it was and you weren't money. you weren't afraid of you weren't afraid of it, so you weren't afraid to do it, to go out there and do it behind the maybe, character? Maybe the, fir- maybe the first couple <clears throat> times, like, where you kind of, you know, the unknown is, like, scary, but, you know, it is like you... I mean, I feel that even now, obviously, way more, but, you know, you never know really what to expect with I a lot of shit. I was you, never really... And I wouldn't even say now, still not... Enti- I mean, I'm comfortable up there, but... Oh, man. If it, does, if it doesn't fit what I'm used to, I'm not very good outside but don't you think that like because i'll feel like sometimes like like i'm going out this weekend and i i've had two and a half months at home and i'm like and i just recorded my special like i released it in like december oh tell everybody what what your special is. it's called england weed and the rest it's actually on the all things comedy youtube page oh great so um you can just go to my website which is garethreynolds.com there's a special link um and it's it's great everybody great man um that's awesome but but so I've had two and a half months at home, and even like a weekend, like I'll, you'll stand in the back and you'll be like, I don't know what it's going to be. Like, I feel right. that still. But then you, I would imagine you get up there and you go pretty soon. Once you get your first laugh, you're like, all right, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, no. No, I know if it's, if it's coming to see me, but like outside or anything, I was never that comfortable. In outside. what? In, in like, doing stand-up situations. Or yeah. Really? Yeah, because see, I mean, I feel like you're like amazing at it. So I would imagine no, that like... What? One time, one time I did the the fucking Yakima State Fair. It's like three grand in the afternoon. There was nobody there. It's like seven people. I go, we're to do. This. And I, the minute I said we're still gonna do the show, and I said, the guy says, you ready? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and I said, <laughs> had to do an hour. Seven people oh, out there. Oh fuck! That is brutal. The guy goes, no, no, but go out there, and your voice will bring them to you. But remember, I I was not comfortable outside. What? When is this? This was in the fucking eighties. Okay, like fuck. So this is like so. This is how bad it was. Nobody's laughing. Nobody knows me. I'm out there in this place for like 1,500, seven people out there. And I look over, and there's a fucking clown <laughs> on, a tri- on a tricycle with the, his big feet on the outside. Oh my God. And he's doing the horn. <laughs> and he's got fucking shit coming out of his hair. And I look at him. And remember, I'm so fucking green. I look at him, and I go, hey, man, how about a little professional courtesy? <laughs> That's what I said to him. And then, to a man and then, on a tricycle. And then 10 minutes later, I said, where's that fucking clown at? Get hey, that motherfucker to come back do, out here. Does he want to work together? Come I feel on. like we're stronger together it than apart. It was fucking terrible. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, those, those situations when you are like, you know when you're fucked. You know when you're beat. There are ones where you just go, it's over. I did kids' birthday parties for like 
probably seven That's years. That's what I wanted to ask you too. In LA. And that oh. makes you so conditioned to bombing that oh. like, I can. But what did you do at a kid's birthday party? I Stand, would. Not stand up. Well, in a way, my boss would always be like, it, it's like stand up. And I'd be like, man, no, it's not. It's I'm in like a Spider-Man outfit. Um, but it's an hour. And you had to keep the attention of children, which sometimes, like Saturday whoa, Late Show, whoa. feels like you're trying to keep the attention of children to some extent. Wow, yeah. And so I would basically roll up. I would find the birthday kid, do some like stupid bits, then do a magic trick, get him right out of the gate, then a game, then another magic trick, then another game, like Ooh. a limbo or like musical hula hoops. And then the closer was balloon animals. And balloon animals were the best because you knew it'd be like 15 to 20 minutes. Your kids are going to be engaged in that. And you can milk it. Like like we were saying, like if you feel like, shit, I'm going through this too fast. I can make balloon animals for a half hour. I would temper it. Like if I, if I had 10 minutes because I ran late, I'd just make every kid a sword by being like, I can make you a dog, a cat, a sword, or a cu and they'd be like, sword. And you, boom, <laughs> oh, you put it out done. there. You but see then that if shit? I see that girl, that's a good one. Yeah. But then if I'm like thirty minutes left, I would be like, I make poodles, I make extravagant poo you know, I'd be like pitching the hard shit. Yeah. So that I could sit there and like milk the time. But it was like you know, there are times where You know what, like, as long as I've been doing fucking stand up, I never considered that. Like if somebody goes, do you want to talk about this? You want to talk about or the Earth? <laughs> yeah. We could do algebra. Yeah. We could talk about the Earth. Yeah. You could be like, well, look, we, yeah. Earth. we can talk about Earth. We can talk about banging doggy style. We could talk about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was what I would do, and then so I would be like, um, and that was like true Lonely Island bombing. Where it was you again in a strange world. I didn't know anybody. The kids, man. And yeah, you'd bomb kids, and kids like can fucking cut you, like murder you so bad. Gil shows up, like they can cut you down so quickly. I'll find them. You better. What yeah. do they say? I got like, a list. What, what do they say? Like, well, the, 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 the well, there's that. First of all, there's like not getting their attention, which is like brutal, you know. And they're yeah. like, he sucks. This is stupid. That's death. He sucks. But the worst, the worst would be. I could see his face under the mask. And then you'd be like, shit, this is like going to be a struggle. Wow. If kids are trying to fucking bust you on being fake under there, you are, it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> like I remember, like, remember you did it as a kid. You'd try to see the dude's face in like Chuck E. Cheese and stuff. Like a kid would be like, I, mean, I saw him. I saw his face. And you'd be Scooby-Doo like, look, shut the fuck. This is the wrong mystery. Like yep. How they, about that? they yeah. would do that. Or you and look that, through the eyes and you see a kid back there in a fucking child. Yeah, you like, see like a stone dude like, like me I, who's like, God damn it. I shouldn't say this for all the kids out there that, are, that believe in Santa Claus, but I, I've done Santa Claus a bunch of times. And I can remember doing Santa Claus in the barrio. And some little kid comes up and he says, You're not the real Santa Claus. I can tell, uh, tell it's a fake beard. And he reaches and he starts to pull my beard. You, and I just smacked his hand and went, Here, <laughs> move on. And he goes, Ta ta! He gave me the finger, and the, the grandfather says, "Come on, cabron, let's go." You probably started it, and I walked him away. You probably started it with Santa Claus. Yeah. You probably started. You start. Santa's a good man. You're a little shit. That's right. He knew. And well, you would. When I would do Santa, you get like so conditioned to like those hands might be coming that you would be like, you know, you would be like oh, Bruce wow. Lee. Hands. I know, but there was a good-looking lady with big tethers over here, so my concentration like, was over here. Come on, sit right here. <laughs> in front of me. Now, you want to see Santa sec? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that would be... You're you know. into the fucking lightning round. Can you feel the... <laughs> yeah. uh, Is but, that what so, you so, so they would do that, they would be like... Yeah, that would be the word. That was death. When a kid or a kid would see your watch or a Spider-Man, they'd uh, see your skin. But I'd be like, I'm Peter Parker, but that argument would never work. Right. You lose, you lose them. And there's like an hour of that shit where halfway through you've lost control, which didn't happen a lot. But when it did, you were like... Oh, Man, this fucking this fucking time time's going backwards shit. right now, and like I would go through that every now and then, and like, but wow, in the same crazy. way that we're talking about like back a club like anxiety, I would before I'd go into a party, I'd be sitting in my car, and I'd be sizing them up and be like, oh, these are like little shits, oh. you know. You'd want like a five, six, seven year old. Sometimes you'd get like one, and you'd be like, what the fuck are you? What is your expectation for me to do with this baby? Wow. The good looking mother. <laughs> well, that would happen too. We're like. You get fetishized by my mothers a little bit, like mothers that have like Spider Man fantasies or something, Ooh. you know, and you'd be like, This is kind of like a weird <laughs> easy kill. <laughs> uh oh, hit the mic. We could work this. Yeah. <laughs> there was uh, well, for mine's, 
for mine's 50, uh, fifth birthday party, <clears throat> and had a bowling uh, thing in Monrovia. Montro- uh, Monrovia. Yeah. There's that little quaint bowling out, like three lanes, rented the whole thing out. And then Ariel came with her red hair and the biggest fucking that oh, that you've ever, oh my God, natural. <laughs> seashell, you know, seashell every, bra. Every, oh, everybody's bowling and the, all the guys are over here like, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't bowl <laughs> anymore. Uh, uh, every, and every, I retired. It's almost like throwing a pebble in the water. Every little move is just ripples of that type of people like, oh. We're trying to see that little bucket of pepperoni slice pop up right there. <laughs> we're like, is there any pepperoni slice? No, shh, shh, we're trying what they, we think so. It might be just her hair. <laughs> but I mean, all the fathers, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. A- almost like you hire an aerial, but then you, you don't see her. You go, oh, your picture probably, she looks good. And when she got there, you're just like, holy shit. Yeah. This is she worked at Spearmint Rhino at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what totally kind of she's not up there for her health, guys. <laughs> she's trying to get rid of that tail. Give her some money. I want to uh, help. <laughs> just secure fat ass back down over there. <laughs> yeah. I love the mermaid. Yeah, I would, but I would like, you know, I would like get that where it'd be like. You'd show up and there'd be like a smoking hot like you'd be a prince or a princess and you'd be like Jesus, I'm in love with this princess. You know, they'd always be professional and it'd be like, all right. Spider around with a little whistle right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made some web. Oh. <laughs> I webbed. I webbed in here. Pardon me, I've webbed. <laughs> uh, may I use the inside bathroom? I seem to have gotten some webbing on the outfit. <laughs> I think I could stick to the building if I tried. Uh, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's not holding on. He's like, you know. <laughs> well, and you'd show. I would show up like a fucking. That's just fucking hilarious. I would show up in like spandex, and I'm like me. So it's like, but Spider Man would be Jack. So kids would be like. But what was the outfit for? Was it a real Spider Man outfit? Well, I mean, like. Was it a one piece or I think one piece he have nylon, a... but you know, skin tight. So now they have it where you could have muscles and all that shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's different now. Yeah. And, and, but then it was just like, for me, it was just like, look, if you're like fucking, you know, you've been drinking a lot of booze, you're going to show up looking like, a are you chunk. saying that I would make a good Spider-Man? Yeah, no, you'd make a great one. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be perfect. But I, I would be like, that. they would be like, Spider-Man has love handles. And you'd be like, oh my God, enough already, you know, or, and you could see your dick. Spider-Man has a love handle. You, you could, could totally see your dick. And that would be a thing where you'd be like, this is like the most awkward shit. Like a little Baskin Robin spoon back <laughs> to a little fucking pink. <laughs> you could just see the little round part. Oh, would you like a sample? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a little spoon right there. Like, hey, yeah. your, light, your, your fucking signal light's on <laughs> the fucking right side. I'm Buzz Lightyear. What do you expect? Blink, blink, blink. I'm trying to get to my home planet. <laughs> <laughs> I need blink, them. Blink. <laughs> and I keep all my important documents down there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that shit is not performing. It's, uh, people, man, listen, people only say, like, you get nervous when you go up there. There's a fucking thousand fucking things performers do that are fucking scarier than stand-up. Yeah. And one of them is being a character at a fucking kid's birthday party. Yeah. No, that is, that is like, to the wolves, fully, you know nobody, full on. And the expectation is, like, if you bomb, I mean, it is it sucks, and it is, like, a bad feeling. But like when it is you, literally your job to keep the attention of children as a character, and you're not, oh. man, you're just like fuck. And did they ever say like you know, hey, uh, you know, we thought it'd be a little more exciting or some shit? That yeah, there was there was definitely times where people would you know where people <laughs> would, well, up. first of all, I mean, you you would have the times where you'd be like these kids just literally want to beat the shit out of me, right? Like, and you'd be like, I kind of got to like figure out how to make that go for an and hour. And can you see through the mask? Yeah, for oh. the most part, there were certain times where it would suck. Like I was. I was SpongeBob once, and it's like the eye holes were like he, it was like good for a horse head, but like for a human man, you were like I can't see shit, and I mean you just do feel like haymakers going at your belly and your ass, ah. and you know, um, but you you definitely like had a lot of like visual issues. You would have, um, you know, you would yeah, you would have parents just be like. I felt like you were, and you'd be like, "I this is not, this is not great." Wow. With a bigger concept like SpongeBob, I would imagine you have balance issues. You know, yeah. It, oh, dude, I was when you used to be a Transformer, you would be like, "I'm gonna like fall." The hardest I've ever seen my brother laugh <laughs> is th- there was this one called. I the love Dar- shit that starts like that. It was the one, and my brother like laughs, but this is like where my brother, I was like, "Is he okay?" We were actually in a bowling uh, alley parking lot because <laughs> I go pick up all these costumes from this dude. 
And then so I'd have them and I'd like get my work orders and I'd be like, okay. So it was like Friday night, we were going to go bowling and I get this one and it's called the Dark Magician and it's this Yu-Gi-Oh character. And the Dark Magician is like, whatever. It's got like a wizard staff and all that shit. It's purple. But the one thing it also had was a like four foot head piece. And so I'm telling him, I'm like, dude, this one is crazy. And he's like, let me see. I put it on and he like lost. <laughs> he couldn't believe that I had to like go in through doorways in it. Oh my God. And so you'd be bending over to like get a balloon and you'd just be like, and you'd just see a kid like <laughs> rocked. <laughs> you know, like you'd just gavel bang a child's head. You'd be like, oh, and you, you know, you got like the four second window <laughs> where like a kid is trying to register how upset it was. You would have to go over there quickly and be like, hey, all right, that's okay, right? They'd be like, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, but you'd be like bang. Yeah, you'd be like, yeah, you'd be like you'd have to like get on your knees to go into the house and shit like that. And you'd be oh just knocking God. kids over. And they were just like, oh, so many encumbrances where you would just be like, man, you get thrown to the wolves. Yeah, that's a bit. Four, five, seven the, times a weekend. Because the guy that didn't, the guy that hired you, fuck, is nowhere to be around. Dude, he would do them, but guess he would get like, he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to be Prince. Eight times, you know, he'd have like yeah. an easy gig. Whereas I'd be like, man, I'm the Hulk. I can't see. I'm like sweating. I had a, I had a Darth Vader once where I was like, legitimately thought I was going to die. Like from the heat in the uh, mask i was like this is like i probably looked like darth vader when you took it off i was just like dehydrated i looked like a raisin <laughs> like you you were just dying in some yeah. of those outfits and all those fucking costumes are fucking they're hot as fuck hot as fuck i can't even imagine doing it now because even when i did it it was hot but it's like you know like last summer like some of the summer he we didn't i didn't get to like that and level. you always had to fucking show up you couldn't like not you couldn't no show. Well, yeah, that was the one thing was always that like, and this, it, <laughs> you were like, there's like a kid. Like that would be the one thing I would think that would be like, it would just like it's even hungover, drunk, Ugh. whatever the fuck it was, I would show up because I would be like, you know, like you kind of gotta do it, and it would <sighs> suck. It would suck, but there would be times where you, the hours sometimes would go fast, and then after you'd be like, oh, I'm dying. Whoa. How did I do? Like, I need an IV, and I just did for an hour. Fuck. Was a referee in like Sherman Oaks somehow. That shit's crazy, isn't crazy. it? Crazy, crazy. Because you got to come in like low profile, and you're like, knock. Oh, come on in. Yeah. Oh, hey, our, our the the fucking Yu Gi Oh Yu Gi Oh fucking characters yeah. here. They'd be like Winnie the Pooh. Wow. You know, and they'd be like, here, we want you in this living room. And you'd be like, there's 18 kids in like the most I cramped know. little we, space. And you should do that. Like, listen, we never did that shit for growing up a fucking party. We didn't have that shit. I, I, well, my grandma, there used to be a thing called. Uncle, I didn't have a party. Fuck, what party for what? My Uncle Ben's <laughs> Kitty Land over there behind McDonald's on, on, on uh. Sepulveda. And they had a drive through, and we'd go over there, and you could see it was like a small kitty land, like with a roller coaster right, yeah, and right. horses and things. And kids had birthday parties there. I can, I'm going to tell you right now, I can still remember being in the car through the McDonald's drive through, right where the car was looking directly into Uncle Ben's Kitty Land. <clears throat> and. Uh, I look at my grandma and said, do you think I could have my birthday party over there? And she's like, for what? So all your friends could go? <laughs> <laughs> That's like a fair question. How old? You're what, like? Seven, eight. Seven. I don't remember. Thank God the owner fucked the kid. They closed it down. <laughs> By the way, I mean, kitty land. Was so I would have to go through that every year. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever had a party until after I was... A grown adult married? Really? Yeah, I never had a kitty party. That's interesting. Listen, my two younger sisters did. What? I don't That's remember even more myself, my my myself and my four older ones. I don't remember ever. What having is a, the Mexican fucking attitude behind? I, I, hey, for what? Yeah, it's his birthday. So, <laughs> so fuck it. So what? I have no idea. We're gonna celebrate everybody's fucking birthday. Oh man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like uh, we, what we're uh, doing is, uh, everyone's kind of signed off Eve. on it. Fuck, fuck New Year's fuck Eve. Fuck that. Every fucking day is New Year's Eve. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we don't have, uh, I never had a birthday party. Yeah, or, never had a birthday or, party. Listen, I, I mean, you know, we all, I, don't, I never asked any of my therapists what, uh, I, I have a hard time opening presents. Really? That's Because something. I never really got any, so I don't really know what to do. That's or what's how to react? I got fucking birthday presents from the fucking two thousands. I haven't opened. Really? They're in my house. But we, they just I tell them put them in the garage. And I know that, I know that they're from people that are significant to me, but I still don't open them. That's crazy. So if someone gives you a gift, do you? You, you know what? Just say put it in a fucking box. 
put nothing in it, and I'll say, hey, thanks. thanks That's what I'm going to do. Player. I'm gonna wrap. I'm gonna Maybe wrap like on it. me. Uh-huh. There's got to be a yeah. con- there's got to be a condition that's called something where you can't open. Yeah, a present. yeah. That is like definitely like it's a not little trauma, bit. but like it's there's tra- yeah. yeah, there's it's some, some trauma. shit attached to that for sure. You see kids just open shit like they're out of their minds. Now it's crazy. And yeah, well, that's even. I mean, arguably, that's also a disorder, but that's one where we're just like okay with it, where it's just you where know, you like buyers. What, well, also people buy themselves stuff. That feel crazy. better. That buying is crazy. it, and then it goes away. Yeah. Or like the people that would do Amazon and uh, buy things and then send them back. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that's a thing. Well, also, there's, there's the whole thing call. where it's like people unbox shit, and people on YouTube will watch people open shit for their reaction. Yeah. Like, it's like fetishizing, like, sort of the gift-giving, like, it is really weird, you know? Because it is like, it. I do think when I was, there's this video of these kids in like Africa who on Christmas, they all just get like a stuffed whale. And like when they open their little present, they like lose their fucking minds. And they're just like, oh my God, look at what you can do with it. Yep. And then you watch kids in this country and you're just like, yeah, they don't give a fuck. There's all, no value. All So all the guys I grew up with married girls from where we grew up with. And Anne was different. Anne was for, for Lauderdale fucking loud. you know. And when mine was like five or around there, went to a birthday party in Simi Valley, and when they brought the cake out, Mayan got excited because they brought the cake out, and all the other kids were like fucking tranquilized. That fucking cuckoo's nest of kids are all like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mayan's like, the cake, jumping up and down, and, and the guy's wife said, "Now oh, she's so excited, and Anne goes, it's a cake. <laughs> kids get excited when they see cake, and all the other kids are like, wait a minute, did you like the cake? Huh? <laughs> They were like fucking little droopers or little dogs. Yeah. Like, hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, they were all sad, right? You yeah. open the door and you'd be in there, hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and none of them excited. They blow out the candle, take fucking 10 puffs while I kid. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta push the stomach. Ah! Blow out the candle. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, just you came, you grew up with. They. They would, first of all, all they did was try to subdue you. Not like, hey, isn't this exciting? They go, hey, fucking relax. It's yeah. the opposite of excitement. Yeah, that's weird. The house is on fire. Hey, hey, hey. Calm we, down. We, we, calm down. We know. <laughs> we got it. All right. You really think we can fucking see smoke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blow it out. Blow but, the house out. My, my grandfather put fucking those wrought iron uh, guards on the windows, the windows, and they didn't have a latch to get out. Jesus Christ. So I go there, and the, on my window, you hear, fucking welding but they're welding it to the house oh my god and through the window I said well how are we supposed to get out and that's my, a problem for later George yeah my grandfather goes that fucker you go out all the time do good for you to fucking stay home <laughs> stay I'm home. talking about in a fire motherfucker be not, good for you you have a nice I night at home when you're yeah. in a fire what if we're fucking house is on fire hey well I guess that's it huh <laughs> <laughs> they'll melt no latch no fucking nothing <laughs> that is crazy I mean, and going hard, and the fucking house is all burned from the side. Yeah. Fuck the weld. Over the weld. Bang. Yeah, fucking shit. But fucking molten shit. Fuck it. Wow. Fucking so, like somebody's going to come and take the fucking window, the iron off. Yeah, right. It. Right. I mean, crazy shit Mexicans do, man. Fucking white people have a latch. You know, hey, yeah. you fucking pull this here. Yeah. You go first. You got, okay, our safe word as a family, our safe word. We know the rendezvous point, right, girls? We know the rendezvous point. Pine tree, too. That's where we meet, under there. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, but it is crazy. Huh? It's a fucking, and, now, and now, kids, everything's, well, everything's, everything's videoed. Yeah. Everything is staged. Yeah. The, 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 to me, one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever seen is when the the bride and the father dance uh-huh. at the at the yeah. at the wedding. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a bunch of those. Yeah, and it's always the father. You know, it's like uh, the motherfucker can't move. You know, it's like, you know it, like he's doing fucking calisthenics. Yeah, the fucking footloose, some fucking shit. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That gets me on the side of the footloose <laughs> town. Who's like, no more dancing. We're done with the dancing. It's bullshit. That fucking uh, priest comes out. Right, everybody's under arrest. <laughs> yeah. Anybody shaking their hips are under arrest. Enough. Fucking crazy, man. You know what? When I worked during the day, this guy, uh, Ernie Ernie Shaw, was a uh, little guy. He looked like the little referee. The, Your friend? Uh, uh, no, no. The, the, the boss was named Ernie Shaw. 
It's very, very by the book, you know, Ernie Shaw. Oh, they, they do this, George. One. So we have a Christmas party, and Mrs. Shaw was drinking. We didn't even, never knew Mrs. Shaw. Uh-huh. But she's drinking with us, and as she's drinking with us, she's like duck billing your fucking bottle of She's fucking dancing. <laughs> wow. And she's going like this. Wow. And you, you can't help but, you know, wow. you go down, you're like, you're like this with Mrs. Shaw. Oh, oh hello. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, All right, Mrs. Shaw, take it easy. She just, she's dancing like this, man. Fucking dancing like clippers off. I go, what, what? And, like, Ow! and, fi- and so good at it, like, uh-huh. No, no little pinch goes unfucking rewarded. Like, she's grabbing just the tip of your verga, the little skin right there. You know, a little like a little chicle, like a saladito right there. It's that loose skin. And uh, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, she went around pinching dicks. Nobody said shit, man. Okay, my question. Nobody is, said, "Hey, Mrs. Mrs. Shaw, fucking grabbing people's hey, fucking where, bottles." Where's, where's Mrs. Shaw at today? Now she's dead, ain't she? Oh. She's gotta be dead. I was at Calamari restaurant. Hundred at fifteen. <laughs> Wow. Out there pitching, pinching dicks in, 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 in heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of cloud. You come back with a little cloud stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I've never, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy shit. That's one of the craziest fucking things that. That's why. We were all, and everybody would go and drink and go, have you danced with Mr. Shaw? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm not even wearing underwear. Fuck, yeah. fuck, right <laughs> it through. It hurts. I fucking. Ow. My, uh, what do they call those pants? That they're fucking, uh, the disco pants. Uh, Paul, uh, polyester? Yeah, but there was a name for him. Oh. <sighs> Fuck, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Shit. Pa- yeah. I would say bell bottoms. But that's no, they were bell bottoms, but there was a name. Nut huggers. Not, uh, uh, uh. Hip huggers. The girls used to wear hip huggers. Fuck. Aaron, what the fuck is it? Uh, they were like Disco Pants 79. Oh, I want to get a pair of Disco Pants. I also wouldn't mind getting the... Uh, Crab treatment. Um, yeah, the crab, the yeah, the, the little the Sebastian. Oh, you got Ariel, Sebastian. then you got Sebastian. Hey, I mean seriously, the whole night she's fucking dancing, there, wink, wink, and just connecting, man. Oh man, I just wish I'd have met her a long time. We ago. all go, go back in there, man. Like I'm going back in. All right, I'm going in for another <laughs> round. <laughs> I'm going for the fucking slow dance. <laughs> and where was uh, the Mister at? Uh, yeah, there, where, yeah, there. That's in the days where you could fuck somebody from work. Yeah. And nobody had an issue. Yeah. I used to work nights, throw ladies over in the lab. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right is that, in there you can't dark. do that at all now? No. And the fear is... There's cameras everywhere. Yeah, right. And there was to be a, a woman uh, that, you know, I was a young, you know, I was like the, this is like the dude that comes into town, hey, like Doc Hollywood comes into town. Hey. Yeah, right. And uh, those ladies like in their 20s or 30s and, you know, you're like 19, 20. Yeah. And you know, at night during the day, both labs work. But then at at night, one lab worked, and the rest of it was empty. I'd go in there yeah, for right. lunch. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Isn't it amazing? Like twenty five or thirty year old used to seem old. Yes. Like you, yeah. you like, and then you, that's so fucking A weird. Dream. Out there. Yeah, you get, but you when you were like, you know, I mean, I, you never had time to be like. Oh, yeah, that's not... Like, when you are that age, you're like, oh, yeah, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you're, like, old, and you're like, man, I can't believe I was, like, looking at 29-year-olds, like, old, human... Like, 30, you used to be like, man, that's fucking... We- I can't imagine making it to 30. There was a movie called The Graduate. Yeah. That oh, movie like turned on a fucking M. Bancroft. Yeah, yeah. That, that movie turned me on. <laughs> that, 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 that Did they show her, on they show her or... naked? No, I don't think they ever showed her naked, but... Uh, I think her just... knee would have been, like... It just made Tome- me uh, tomato, desire- little oh, cherry I tomatoes. Wanted that, yeah, I always yeah. wanted that older lady. Yeah, I was and she wasn't that. Said. Well, I would say she was very different looking, but still kind of hot. I also yeah. think she might have been younger than him when they shot it. I think there's something like that. Get, no, Aaron. No, no okay, never mind. I tried. Susan, Ro- uh, Catherine Ross yeah. from. Uh, but she wasn't that much Sundance. older. They, like, Not that much older. Like, and that's the way I picture. I. I my girlfriend, then I said, that's all kinds like, of pelos. That's like the way we're going to get married. <laughs> that's the way we're going to get married. I'm going to be screaming. You know, he, he'll take you up to the, and I'm going to take you out of there. We're going to run off and get married. That's what I always thought. And, but I, and her mother didn't look anything like Anne Bancroft. <laughs> her mother hated me, but I just that's what I figured I was going to have to steal her because her mother hated me then. The Stifler's mom is in a movie you told me to watch, White Something. Oh, White, White, White Lotus. Lotus. White Lotus. Yeah. And I started watching, because you told me, hey, watch it. You. I started watching it. I got to two seasons. I'm sitting there saying, 
I'm still hooked on it, but I'm saying, but why did George want me to watch this movie? I thought there was something because uh, who killed the... Uh, no, the, the Italian guy. chicks were hot. Well, they were. They had some big pitfalls. Yeah, them. beautiful. The Italian yeah. chicks were hot. I, I, I liked them. But you didn't like the whole overall thing? Well, I didn't know why, <laughs> what the specificity was. I thought it was, was good. I thought it was... Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought it was a murder mystery. Did, did Pearl watch it too? Yeah. And she, what did she say? She liked it. She's hooked on it. Right now, though, she's hooked on uh, Yellowstone. Oh, and watch it. Have you seen Yellowstone? No. Aaron? No, I haven't. That's Are the you? big hit. Uh, I haven't seen it. No. Oh, But watch everybody's it. watching it. Everybody you like it? it? Yeah. Is it good? Good. It takes me a while to watch stuff. They got a broad with big well, it's an hour. there. What do you mean? Yeah, but I mean, like, once it's, on for, like once it's on for, like, a Beth? couple years, then I'll get around to it and, like, start watching stuff. I just watched East Bound and Down and Barry, all of Barry fucking great. Barry's you seen Barry? Great. No. Barry's oh! Great. Barry, you'd love Barry. Barry's a great show. Bar Barry is, you know what? I think you start watching Barry. All right. It's really good. Hey, you watch, you watch Yellowstone. You'll fall in love with Beth. She got big tetas. That's and she and she's hot and she throws her shit around. And she, she, is she nude in there? There, there's a couple of shots where I don't know. I don't remember. If she's nude, semi nude, and she she's nasty. She's nasty. She she goes to get married. Just one. I'm not going to spoil it. She goes to get married, and she just type broad and says, "Fuck it, I do. Let's do it." And says, fuck it right there. Oh. And they got, the priest says, okay, you're <laughs> not married. And then he said, hey, can I get it right back? Because they kidnapped me over here. They had kidnapped the priest just to, to get him married. I mean, it, it's. But what is it about? Did it take place in modern day? N yeah. Yeah. It's it's modern day. Uh, all, you know, nice looking vehicles are driving. It's all out in Montana in the country. It's horses. It's all really old good, cowboy though. shit. Yeah, it's like the number one show. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. everybody likes it. it yeah. It's uh, it's all old cowboy shit. It's hot. There's a lot, lot of activity going on. My activity my, meaning sexual activity. No, not only sexual. A lot of shooting. A lot of murders. There we go. There, there's a lot of action going on. And uh, remember when Billy Jack, uh, that dude, cut the bra off the girl. I don't remember that uh, part. The Corvette. He had the Corvette, Jack. and the guy had a top off. No. Then. Then he like takes the knife in between and cuts it. Up. No. You know, oh. and Billy Jack shows up and makes the dude drive his Corvette into the water, into the lake. No, there's a guy. There's Jack an act, uh, a part in this, uh, and it was just described to me in the vehicle the other day with another couple we were with. Uh, some guy named Rip. That's his name, and the you know they call him Rip. He's the. He's the oh yeah, I did. I did uh, Jimmy Fallon with that guy Kohlhauser. I don't know who. Yeah, Rip. Yeah, Rip. Yeah. He's, Rip. A, he's a yeah. He's and, an actor that's been around. I think he might have been a kid actor, too. Oh, wow. and, and he says, you know, the, the lady in the back, she says, you know, Rip, there's something about him. I'm, he, he's, he's not that handsome. You know, he's a good-looking guy. He said, and he's not skinny and all muscle-bound. He's got a little pouch to him. She says, but there's something about him, and his character is just hot, and the bitch, all, all the bitches want him. See, that's what we need to hear. I like to hear that. Like that dad one bod, way never... rough around the edge. Yeah, he that's my he's... sweet spot. That's what but I look he... like as Spider Man. But he's tough. Yeah, right. He, he's a tough, hard dude. That's why I don't have it. And it, it's a, it's a, watch it, Yellowstone. When uh, we were in high school, um, uh, one of the one of the football players, uh, Malcolm uh, Malcolm Moore, we used to call him Malcolm Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, used to you, they'd go from football practice with the shorts and the dude's walking fucking dick is out like oh we're boy. walking to class fucking <laughs> yeah. a little follower right there right, down there right. you know you know how when the jets fly that little thing comes out <laughs> and it, they, get, they get gas in the air and goes, god damn how long is Malcolm's ready to go move Malcolm, I, I, I gotta go to football Malcolm practice. is clear for takeoff Malcolm, Malcolm's coming out there I mean that motherfucker was falling down like god damn what the fuck <laughs> like a fucking apple, like a fucking just hanging with a. Uh, I mean, we're, and you know, we're fucking Chicago. Ours is little, you know. Like it, yeah. It gets cold. For, for, uh, I mean, just even when it's just sitting at attention, it's not fucking, you know. Yeah. But then we're like, what the? I mean, you know. <laughs> crazy shit, man. <laughs> with Vedic, I was saying. Yeah. Uh, they got to make gym shorts longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the problem. Well, remember, I remember like when, I mean, I remember how fucking weird it was when you were in high school and you'd go into like locker rooms and like dudes were starting to get huge dicks and you were just like, what the fuck is going on right yeah. now? Like we shouldn't all be showering together. It was like, it was like, it was quite well, a bit of, yeah. It was weird. Like they should, there should be some sort of like you know rite of passage where they're like to, your dick's big enough to go. The YMCA did that where the YMCA would like split because I used to go to the Y and they would do like. 7 to 10, then they'd do like 10 to 14, and then if you were like going through puberty, you'd oh. go in the adult one. 
And that made more sense because when as a kid, when I go into the adult one, I'd be like, "This is I'm not prepared to see this yeah. many pubes and dicks." I you know rather you know you, you talk about that when I was in junior high school, where we started taking showers together. Then yeah. High school, I don't remember looking at dicks as much as I did nuts. Wow. Some people You're had a nut nuts guy. that were hanging <laughs> fucking way low. Yeah. We had a buddy we used to call him Pooch. Holy had shit. Nuts that but how come like it hangs so low as a fucking young guy? Yeah. I, I have no idea. I'm not. That's another show. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I don't know why they, they hang. I just know. Say, God damn, look at those nuts are hanging down so low. I'm, you know what? I, I found it fucking very. <laughs> Unusual after PE to like take a shower and go yeah. to school with your hair, go back to class with your hair wet. The whole that whole part of it was super fucking because you weird. know you push that thing for the soap and no fucking soap would come out. That two little fucking little fuzz, yeah, little fuzz things. Yeah, and, and they soap. give you the timer shower too, yeah. where you just be like, hey, come on, can you not trust me to like have and it? And the towel was like this big. Yeah, the towel small like a fucking towel. Placement. Yeah, Malcolm could have like used two fucking towels Malcolm, just for his dong. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, why do you need a third towel for? He'd be like, where are the snake? You know, do it like you hand wash cars. The guy's out one side with a fucking. <laughs> Fucking dry it. Hand dry it. <laughs> fucking Malcolm. Fucking by the way. Yeah. I wonder what Malcolm's doing today. I don't know. He was a football player. Laid. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. But he's getting laid. He's happy. He's doing well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's funny that that. Uh, he's got twenty five grandchildren. Thirty five. It's funny that that our guys are obsessed with tits, but like with a, I, I just you know when you see a woman walk, like they either show it off or don't show it off. Yeah. But like that's part of the culture. Not like dudes where. Tighter pants where you could see it or not see it. Like, oh, that guy's flat. Or yeah, but guy. remember, like a few years ago with John Hamm, when everyone was like, "Oh, you can see John Hamm's dick," and everyone was like, "Quit sexualizing John Hamm's dick." And you were like, "Yeah, but that's like, what? that motherfucker had a fucking fist, yeah, like soul power in his fucking pants, and fucking like this, man." That's why they call him Ham. It fucking looked like he had a fucking like, yeah. But you, but he'd be acting. You could see his, the, the fucking water wiggle under the underneath. <laughs> Remember that? Like, you know how the water wiggle, the, the stem was little of the fucking yeah, head? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a goddamn yeah. fucking campana, like yeah. a fucking bell in but the But it was pants. like, that, like, when that happened, everyone was like, this is so weird to, like, talk about it. You're like, well, like, that happens with you ever see, You ever seen time. him? You ever seen no. him? No. No. You're going to love his dick. No, no, it's no. fantastic. Doing, and, and I think, does he know? Yeah, he knows, right? Yeah, he knows. He he was in the best position where he was like, everyone knew his dick was big, and he had to be like, enough, I don't want to field any more questions about my hog. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I was like, John, you know. <laughs> he was like, I get it. It's awesome. It's huge. Holy Jesus. Yeah, I mean, come on. And that's, you know, just fucking hanging out on the way. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, he's like a regular, he's looking at his phone yeah. like a regular guy. Said he's like Malcolm. <laughs> wow. I mean, that is, I mean, it really is crazy how clear that is. I mean, that is, that honestly, I mean, like, it's, we're talking, you can see head. Oh, Lord. Wait till I show that one to the wife tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't the, show her again. The eagle has Don't landed. let her know that's out there. Yeah. Hey, this, I'm surprised this doesn't hey, look, fucking land out there. Hey, a picture of me up close. Yeah, yeah, get one of me. Hey, now get one of me and John's dick. Yeah. I mean. Tag that, me. How that motherfucker show, it lands in Lancaster at night, the fucking, <laughs> fucking space shuttle like, discovery. So John's dick's on set, but John's going to be 20 minutes uh, late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Yeah. Ridiculous. I'd rather not. How do you put it? Uh, you look put at it, Gil. I, I, think pelo, I think the fucking pelos are in there, too. You want to see a tattoo of it? <laughs> <laughs> I prepared. That shit, man, that I just saw a picture wild, of some old guy in an airplane wearing shorts. Oh, boy. And the guy, the other pattern said, hey, look what I took a picture of. <laughs> oh, man. And the guy's sitting there wearing shorts. Older guy. And he's, you can see he, he had a tattoo. His shorts are here. Or one leg. And the head of a dick is coming out the, oh, at the fuck. bottom of the at the bottom of his shorts. Oh my god! The tattoo that he had put on. Oh man, that, you can't. I mean, on a plane. I don't, know, man, no. I don't know. I saw a guy watching porn on a plane once. And oh, I was like, that's fucking nuts. Yeah. What, what was he? You make it sound like doing? it's a bad thing. I'm what? sorry. Yeah, what was he doing? No, well, he wasn't I mean, on the Wi-Fi. He was just like what, like muted watching porn before, like when everyone's getting prepared to take off, and he just had like porn on his phone and was like comfortably watching it. And, and yeah. like was trying to hide it, but I was like behind, and I was like, "This is fucking crazy." What is that, dude? What I mean, it's that like we're so desensitized to this shit where it doesn't feel strange to be doing these things that are like, Sir, like that has got to be like private. And that to me, I was like, there are a lot of gray areas where you're like, yeah, you can't. Who knows? Sir, what turn you, your phone up. Yeah, he was like, hold on, I just got to finish this call. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Hold on. How do you get on the United Wi-Fi? Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss, could you help me? This guy's about to nut. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I was just like, fuck. Like, that to me was like, okay, we got to, like, I mean, I'm, I'm all for, like, freedom, but I was like, this is not okay. Yeah. You That's, can't be watching no, no, no. porn on a... You can't be watching porn... We can't get to the point where it's, like, okay for people to be watching porn in public. Just from a general standpoint of, like, I don't want to watch someone no. be, a, like, a feel erotic about what's on their phone. Or, you know, one time Ann found my stash... Stash you know, of porn, right? And wherever it was stopped was like, oh, that's what you like. That's brutal. Because after you, 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 you take that off, so, is, ah, so this not, is a while. I mean, it's obviously, like it's a your while fucking ago. DNA at but the fucking that, oh, So this that, is what you like. That is amazing. Your lady one time can't come home from work. She says, I found your porn. I said, I don't have any Thank porn. Thank God. Here. I thought I lost it. She says, no, I found it. Videotape. I said, I don't it. have any videotape porn here in the house. And she says, I found it. It was in the TV, and I found it in the video thing, and there was a... I said, well, maybe it was probably your son, you know, doing uh, that late-night shit. You know, he probably, you know, probably distorted copyright. She says, no, it's not soft porn. This is hardcore. Yeah. I said, let me see it. She says, no, I threw it away. I said, well, goddamn, why did you throw it away? That's evidence. Why? You know, just, she says, I threw it away. I don't want it in my house. I said, all right, so it's gone. I come home the next day. She says, I found out it belonged to... Some friend of my son's, and my son just said, oh, I just borrowed it just to look at it. I said, see, and you were blaming me. Uh, that's I awesome. said, so wait a minute. He saw it. I thought you said you threw it away. Well, I hadn't thrown it away. I just didn't want it in the house, so I gave it to him to give back to his friend. Uh, I said, oh, come on. I, saying yeah. I borrowed it because I just want to see it is like, yeah, you wanted to watch porn. Yeah. Uh, when I worked during the day son, in the 80s, he was, he was a, cochino. a guy brought me a VHS of porn, and it's the worst thing that I wish he had never brought it. Why? Because after that, I, I couldn't stop watching porn. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, yeah. I'm was. i fine without it. Yeah, I am too. I have I took a long break from watching porn, and then if I like every now and then I'll watch it now. And it is like, after having like four years away, and like watching it after like four or five years, you're like, man, it got really fucked up in that like time off. Because so much of it, first of all, like even the ads on the side. Yeah. Like, it's like, I don't want to watch Marge Simpson get fucked by the family guy, dad. Ah, like, ah, I'm good. You know? Yeah, they do have that shit. But then it's up. also like, so much stuff is like, first of all, every, the look is just aesthetically the, yeah. the people. What, what are, about now that they can put your face? Have you seen it where like the, the dude, like the girl from behind, and you can put a box there, and you can put your face on the Who, girl's face? Why? Wait, what? Why would no. you want it? Why would Yo, you I'm want gonna do that? it where you're the bent over, and I put. My, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's gonna put it in a VCR. And like, oh, this is what house. you like. I know what you like now. He's like, you're not doing the podcast. I, I, I. I. <laughs> uh, you can. You can scan. But I, why would you even want that? Isn't that I, like? I would want, isn't I, that like going beyond? Like part of it is that like it's a whole AI thing. I know, but it's like you gotta like. Uh, I mean, you gotta it's, like think about having real sex and keeping that as like the best yes, version of, of anything. I, that's what I think. And then so it's like when you do that sort of shit, then you're just going like, well, if you if you can beat regular fucking, you shouldn't be doing that. That's the line. Uh, can we make that the slogan <laughs> of the podcast, Aaron? Make it happen. Also, can we bring up John Ham's dick on this monitor when you get a second? Thanks. Or, uh, or uh, and uh, print some stuff out like on Apple. You can make a screensaver or yeah, uh, a, a holder for your phone. If phone you case. could print it on some shirts, that'd be awesome. I think we should have John Ham's. Um, yeah, that got be the pass to get in. Come on, there it is. I think I feel like there's John some resistance Hamm. coming from in the, the se in the seventies. Guys, guys went like that all the time. In the seventies with the, like the, the jeans and yeah, the, right. Just so you could see. I, I yeah. never had yeah. something that big, so I don't know. Yeah. But guys, guys did that shit. And album covers. Uh, you ever seen an album cover uh, yeah. where you can see a guy's spot? Well, that's like Spinal Tap, where they would be like, they would put like <laughs> yeah. the fucking foil cucumbers in, the, in their pants. In the in the 70s, those guys did that where. And that was part, which is so weird, because it's like. It's part of the rock. I know. Rock and roll. I know, but still, part of rock doesn't need to be rock hard. Man. Right. That would be, like, that is like. So how much bigger could that thing get when it was rock hard? Ha hey, John Hams? Yeah. Show him the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, uh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know you wanted to see it hard, Gil. We got that. Aaron, bring that over. We got it on. It's on two different screens. We can't oh. put it on one. It's like a mounted fish. We got to bring it in. We got three guys lifting it. They're Mount, union. It's like a mounted fish. <laughs> it's like a barracuda. Let's see. Here's here's one. Uh, Sticky fingers, Rolling Stones. But there was one where Journey. 
Oh, the guys in Journey had it. Uh, that's Steve Perry. See, that's the problem. Yeah, that's why he said, "Don't stop believing." That's about his cock Don't and leather pants. Don't stop believing. A big fucking follow's gonna yeah, follow you around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a snake trying to get out of a tight garbage bag. <sighs> oh yeah, look. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. I knew there was one there, Journey, the guy in Journey. <laughs> I like the other guys. They were like, hey, man, can you wear brown pants like the rest of us? That's, uh, <laughs> that's what his name was. Uh, uh, what was the keyboard player? Uh, BD, Big Dick. And by the way, of course, <laughs> of course it's the keyboard player. He's like, I'm in the back, but you name? know what I'm lead on? Cock. <laughs> I I'm play lead, lead schlong. God, I can't remember his name. Fuck it. Oh. By the way, he also probably played the... You don't need to remember his name. He, I can't remember his name No, the guy with the big dick. A keyboard and organ, turns That's out. That's some crazy shit, man. I can't remember. Um, oh. Doesn't matter. He's he's happy with that legacy. He's like, you don't need to know my name. Just know That's the right. outline. That's it. Just, just, just know it. Yeah. Jonathan Kane? Jonathan... No, the other guy. Uh, Greg Raleigh. Wow. Yes, you don't know Jonathan Kane because he had like a Jonathan Kane's a little tiny palo. Yeah, right? he, came, he, came <laughs> after, he came after uh, Greg Raleigh left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thanks for big, coming by. Big pants to fill. Big pants. All in white pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was appreciated, man. That was awesome. Dude, I appreciate it. I'm still wearing white pants. All of them were in white pants. Maybe I got some for you in the car. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. No, I really am like such a huge fan. Oh, thank so, like, you, dude, I really appreciate but, but, it. But what, what's the, uh, like, are you, is it that easy? Like, does it, because you're fucking hilarious, man. Like, just. It just comes into you, right? Yeah. I don't think it's anything you could teach anybody. It might be just to open your mind and let let your mind be open. Yeah, I think I think it. I mean, I'm again, man. Like I'm I'm very like lucky that um, you know, I got like comfortable being. You don't want to fucking you know? just all step up the top of his head, man. Great. Right now, tonight, yes. Yeah, but no, I mean, again, like that is it is like. For me, what is great is to be able to like talk to people that I think are fucking amazing, and like my my podcast is basically that. Like my podcast, the dollop. So if people like listen to me be like yeah. a fucking weirdo, you can go listen to the dollop, you know. But it's also like I I like talk. I and mean, when you're talking to good people, like you just enjoy the fuck yeah. out of it. And so that's part it's really of it you know too. doing this. I was never really comfortable in conversation for that long, you know. So it really, it really has. Help me in, in my other stuff because I could do this for two hours where I thought before fuck. No, but you're no also one. a great like a great. I mean, I think very funny, but also like a great interviewer. I yeah. think the way you do this podcast is also like a way that is. Re it really is like free flowing and like right. enjoyable as yeah. fuck. So yeah, you know, we're good, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then um, we'll go get those ham tattoos. Oh yeah. <laughs> But what if you go buy pants with it already in there? Yeah, pre ham. Uh, pre ham. Pre -ham. <laughs> I'm looking for some pants pre ham. <laughs> you just got some in. Uh, all the whites are gone, of course. Um, all right, everyone. Thanks, Sam.